Well, the temperature might be dropping, but the tension and excitement is rising ever still. And one person who's just as excited as the rest of us is Tash Crump. I mean, this is your first Bucks Big Wednesday, Tash, but you are by no means a stranger to Britball. Just how excited are you for today's matchup? 
I'm really excited. I think this first Division One final, we know, for example, NTU, they're no strangers to this final. And so that's going to be really exciting to see that experience come through. But also just the other side and looking at, um, looking at just the whole day itself is just really exciting. Now, quick word before we start talking about NTU and their amazing coaching team. Um, the weather is starting to get a little bit windy up here in Loughborough. It, temperature has dropped. It is getting chilly. How's that going to affect play today? I think, especially with the wind, that does affect what you are going to do. And if they have planned, especially to get the ball through the air, they're not going to be able to do that. Like, they're not going to do that at all. And I think looking at their run game, they do have strong runners. And so I think with NTU, they are able to do that, like, dual play. And so I think if the wind can calm down, they will be able to use... Use their use their threat through the through the wind through the air. Sorry. Now let's have a quick word then on Nottingham Trent University themselves. This is fantastic. They've made it this far all the way to Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance. Um, but by no means it's been an easy run in for them though. They've had a run in in postseason. They had to defeat both Leeds and Manchester. You could argue that that prepares them really nicely for this match. Oh, massively. I think when you look at the scores, um, when you look at their scores and how they managed to get here. Um, they, they have had a tough run, but that does prep them for the big final. And we've seen that, for example, through um, through previous, not just uni ball seasons, but, but British American football seasons, where the people that have the tougher runs are actually able to then come out better the other side because they are more well prepared for these big occasions. Well, just quickly, uh, a word on their American quarterback, Chris Venegas. He's been absolutely outstanding all season long. I mean, how crucial is it to have someone like that, not just in the locker room, but out on the pitch playing for you too? Yeah, having someone with experience and that knowledge and probably been playing for basically all of his life, um, it does help when it comes to actually understanding, being able to read the plays. And you want a quarterback that can really lead the team. So having somebody that fully understands what they need to do, when they need to do it, but also what they need to change up, it makes the coach's life so much easier having someone on the pitch that they can trust and they obviously trust him. Well, on that note, let's have a quick word with Adrian Giles, the head coach of Nottingham Trent University, and find out what he has to say ahead of this fixture. Adrian, first off, a huge welcome to Loughborough University. What does it mean for your Nottingham Trent side to be here at Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance? It's great. It's a great opportunity for us. Um, it's something we've worked for for well, a good fair few years. Obviously, these guys have come through. Um, it's like the guys that are about to leave us, the guys that have come in on the team, they've all bought into the ethos for the squad, and it's, it's, it's paid off. Really. This year, we had a really good year. Now let's talk a little bit about the postseason uh, run of form. You've had some tough, tough matchups. Uh, people have been saying a lot tougher than the extra side of the camp, who many have argued have had an easier run in, and the 160 points for kind of argues in favour of that. But this game, by no means, is going to be easy, is it? No, well, to be honest, none of the games were easy. Um, they, they, every single game we've played, you know, we've gone full out. One, you know, every game you want to win. Um, but the guys have come together, they've bonded, they've gelled well, and we've kind of got it together going into, into this you know, postseason. It's all come together well. Um, obviously, last week's game in the terrible conditions, but uh, you know, it, it, it showed that we were able to step it up and, and get that job done. You were able to topple some mighty forces in the form of uh, Leeds and Manchester, which is pretty impressive uh, coming up to Bucks Big Wednesday. But a special mention actually should be said to your quarterback, Chris Venegas. I mean, he's been phenomenal for you guys all season, potentially the, the key player, if you will. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Chris has come on board. Uh, we were in contact this time last year and he was like, yeah, get, get on board, want to come over. Uh, yeah, he's, he's a great guy, humble. He's, he's, he lifts everybody around him. So it's not just saying, oh, he's an American quarterback. He can do this, that and the other. Um, in training, around, I mean, the, the rookie receivers we've had this year, they've come on no end. I mean, they've got guys that would never touch the ball before. And now they look like a receiver. It's, it's phenomenal having that kind of character around the team. And he just lifts everybody. What's the aspirations after today then? Because how you're hoping for uh, some success and some silverware today, I'm sure. But that team that you just spoke about and how they developed this season, do you want to continue that going forward? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I say, this has been a process since probably coming out of COVID. Um, obviously, those guys come out without having a, a, a season of football. Um, they built on that. So the guys that sort of like laid the foundation for the team as it is today. Yeah, they, everything goes to those guys from, from well, go back sort of like 10 years easily. Everything's been built into to getting here, getting to the Prem. Uh, I think last summer we were there was 2016, 2017. Uh, we had, a, again, a good squad. And then we got the same again. We've got young guys coming through. First year, second news. Now you'll be hoping that your boys look pretty in pink by the end of today. Uh, give us one quick word on something they need to remember going into this matchup with Exeter that should hopefully lead to the, to the win. 
yeah, just focus. Focus on your job. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> if they want anything else, we'll not. Focus on your job. Do what you're supposed to do, and everybody will be happy at the end of the day. Adrian, thank you so much. I'll let you get back to the warm-up. Thank you very much. So, Tash, great to hear there from Adrian Giles. But we're going to turn our attention completely the other end of the pitch to the Exeter team that have made it here today. 160 points in their favour from offence. That in itself is an amazing headline to read at Bucks level. Yeah, I think that when you look at their score lines, and actually they've had a lot of shutouts too, so when you look at like their points for, points against... That I mean, you've got you can't really say they are the favourites coming in, but with that amount of points scored, their offence are on a roll right now, and they're not going to stop. So many will look at that though and argue that surely Exeter have had a slightly easier run into this final, and maybe they're not as well prepared physically and mentally as Trent might be. What do you say to those people, you know, asking those questions? Yeah, you kind of got to agree with them in a way. It's like what you were saying about NTU. If you come in actually with that preparation where you've had to be physical, you've had to fight for every single game, then in this situation where you've got an extra team that have kind of breezed through every single match, it's either you can kind of say to them, that's a really strong team, or they've just had really easy opposition. And I think today we will find out which one it is. We certainly will. And a note on that as well. Both teams are completely undefeated in this season so far. So today is going to ruin someone's season because they won't be undefeated by the end of play today. And actually, Tash, that does speak volumes of the extra side's quality. You know, maybe you think that it's not actually that they've had easy opposition. They are actually a really, really good side, especially with those shutout records on the defensive side. Yeah, definitely. I think we can look back at what happened at the last Brit Bowl with Manchester Titans. We constantly said they had the easier season. They were breezing past all their oppositions. They were managing to go down to their like third and fourth strings during matches. But actually, that gets the whole team ready and prepared throughout the season. And I think that, especially with the shutouts, it shows not only how strong their offense is, but how strong their defense is. Now, before we hear from the head coach, Simon Stadon, just a quick word about how you've had a helmet on yourself before as a player. What's it actually like in these big occasions? The entire season has been building up to today. There's a lot riding on these players' shoulders. You know, how do they deal with it? Yeah, I think being an ex-uni ball player, you, you come into each game thinking actually this does have a consequence because you're thinking I'm representing my university but I'm representing for the Bucks points I'm representing for that wider that that wider knowledge that like we can call ourselves the champions and I think that you put on that helmet and instantly you start getting nervous the nerves start kicking in you start realizing how big of an occasion it is but then the moment you step out on that pitch everything goes because you just think let's leave it out on the pitch I'm a player I can play just as well as they can and hopefully they're all thinking that too. Let's leave it out on the pitch. Before we leave ourselves out on the pitch, let's try and find out the thoughts of Simon Stadden, head coach of the Exeter University side, leading up to kickoff. Simon, first of all, congratulations. Welcome to Loughborough University. You've made it to Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance. How are you feeling right now? Uh, excited. Uh, yeah, a bit trepidatious. It's um, yeah, first time here, so yeah, really excited to be here. And uh, yeah, just want to get things out of the way, to be honest. <laughs> So well, talk to me a little bit about what it's been like in camp this week. You know, most teams are just like, oh, yeah, we just treat it as any other week. Has that really been the case down in Exeter? I mean, this is a huge occasion. Yeah, it has, actually. Um, you know, all year we've tried to keep the players um, quite focused instead of, um, you know, instead of being frenzied. And, and we really try and calm them down and just try, hopefully try and encourage them not to get caught up with the whole situation. It is a big thing, but, um, you know, we try not to let it get away with them. But, yeah, we have been, been training as usual. So, yeah, no surprises. <laughs> And one of the major headlines from uh, this postseason, actually, is the fact that your offence have managed to put past 160 points on your postseason opposition. I mean, that's surely a good headline to read going into this final. Uh, do your offence need some praise? They do. We've recruited quite well last year. Um, been bolstered by a few players as well. So you know, it's it's turned out to be a very good year for us. You know, Players-wise, you know, we've got very able athletes on offence, and it, and it's just showing. You know, we've. Um, we used to struggle with certain phases of the ball, but we're happy running whatever we want at the moment, which is really good. We're happy to pass, we're happy to run, which, which I think is a, is a luxury for a lot of teams, and we're you know we're very grateful for it. So, well, and in the round of 16, actually, a note on your offense. I'm going to talk about the defense. In the round of 16, you conceded no points in that game, and then overall only conceded 24 in total. So, huge praise to the, to the defense themselves and how well they've actually done too. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, again, it's we've been bolstered by a couple of couple of decent players, but it's all really down to the core uh, recruitment that happens year in year out. As any any other coach will know at university level, uh, sometimes it's, it's good, sometimes it's bad. So it's just a case of building on what we've got. And of course, you know, the, the coaches take the most of the praise. You know, the, our, our OC and director of football, Lyde, Coach Lyde, and the defensive um, coordinator Jack Mullins, have really built built schemes around the players, and it um, pays dividends. So yeah, we're happy with that. 
Now, just before I let you go back to your warm-up, uh, give me one thing that your side need to remember going into today, because there's always stuff to improve on. Uh, what's something that's caught your eye about your team in particular? Um, I mean, we just need to be just need to be a bit more disciplined. I suppose most coaches would say exactly the same thing: just control the controllables, um, do what we do, try not to give too many penalty yards away, try not, you know, try and secure the ball, try not to have too many turnovers. It's all cliche stuff because it's true. You know, it's just um, you know, control what we can control and, and go out and, and have fun and, and do what we do. So, fingers crossed that'll result in a win. Well, go have fun, enjoy the rest of that uh, warm up, Simon, and thank you very much for your time. Well, the stage is set. The time is now for one of these teams to continue their unbeaten season and go undefeated all the way to claiming the championship final today. And I'm pleased to say that someone has run up to join me in commentary. It is, of course, Tash Crump. Tash, how was your journey up here? My journey up here was great, actually. I love coming to Loughborough. You love coming to Loughborough. And look, the sunshine is starting to come out again, it is, which it knows, is fantastic. It knows I'm here. It knows I'm here. The sun has come out. The sun is shining. Hopefully the wind will stay away. Ever humble, Tash. I always love it. Ever humble. <laughs> but look, we are set for a fantastic game today. There are going to be some, some brilliant battles on the line. There's going to be some brilliant battles in the backfield. And now it's time to welcome out the teams onto the field for this championship final, starting with the University of Exeter. Fired up to the max there, Tash. Uh, I think it's fair to say. I was just enjoying the pictures of watching them all go running past. They are just filled with adrenaline right now. Yeah, I mean, who wouldn't be? This is such a big occasion, and this is great for them. Their first, well, their, their first Division One final um, for, I think, a very long time, James. So, yeah, I, I'd be fired up too. And look, on the eve of Bucks finally getting a national championship for American football and University of American football programs, what better way to put your hand up to be included in the future than by winning today here at Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance, and putting another statement victory on there. Just a reminder, because we haven't said it enough in the build-up already, 160 points in favour of Exeter so far in this postseason run. So expect plenty of points from the green machine. I think it's fair to say that the Demons are going to cause havoc on this pitch here in Loughborough today. And Tash, one quick word from you ahead of Nottingham Trent's arrival. Do you think Exeter are scared of them at all? No, I think the Exeter are going in. They know what they need to do. They've got a stacked up team. They've got plenty of experience with GB under 19s, with actual G, with, with the full men's GB players. So yeah, I think I think they're going to be all good. Well, and as you can hear from the stadium announcer, it is now time to welcome the Nottingham Trent University team out onto this Loughborough field. Tash, as far as entrances go, I've heard of looking pretty in pink, but that is pretty impressive if you ask me. Yeah, NTU coming out in their usual bright pink statement team colours. It is great. It's so great to see. I've played against NTU myself and they are a tough team to play against. They're always fired up. They've always got so much talent. Yeah, they're, they're coming to win this and you can tell with that entrance. Keep an eye out for that very special number seven jersey in amongst the melee there in front of you on your screen. For well, that is Chris Venegas, the chosen one who's tr crossed the pond. He's travelled here with the Nottingham Trent team to Loughborough today to really make an impact from the quarterback position. The American obviously inundated with footballing experience out in the States itself. And I'm sure that'll pay dividends here today for the Trent side. And we're going to take a quick word here on our officiating team as they are lined up nice and neatly, ready to go for the coin toss. Both sides making their way onto their chosen touchlines. And so it's a good hello and a big hello to referee Ben Griffiths, umpire Kieran Smith, headlinesman Roger Goodgroves, line judge Henry Young, back judge Paul Todd, field judge Amir Brooks, side judge Ewan Patterson, centre judge David Parsons. 
And all of today's officials are members of the British American Football Referees Association, BAFRA for short, Tash. For more information about becoming an American football referee, please visit the BAFRA website at www.bafra, that's B-A-F-R-A, dot info. Because really, Tash, without these gentlemen that stood in the middle of the pitch, games like this just can't happen. No, and BAFRA are a great organisation who have managed to, I guess, really push their recruitment, but especially recruitment in women's uh, referees stepping up and taking the field. And we've seen a lot more talent coming through on the referee front in more recent years. Well, and this is the first big interaction between the sides with the referees, the coin toss. Tash, games are won and lost in this moment, I think it must be said. We saw it, especially in the Super Bowl this year where it was won at the coin toss, essentially, and decision that came from it. But for now, it's time for the national anthem. As God Save the King rings out around Loughborough University, you can see the teams there on the sideline ready, raring to go. The adrenaline has not died down. The tension is palpable here at the moment within the Rugby One Stadium. And now it definitely is time for the coin toss to take place. So the captains from either side are getting ready to step forward. Tash, just a quick word on the actual coin toss itself. As I said already, games are won and lost in this moment, really, because the decision out the back of it can really define the momentum at the start of this game, and that is huge. Yes, if you decide to receive the ball, so if you and the project you decide to receive the ball now, you made the wrong decision, you want to be receiving the ball at the start of the second half, because if you can then come out all guns blazing and really steam down the pitch to get that first touchdown in the second half, you are properly making a statement. But at the same time, some teams can obviously make a statement straight away. Best to try and hit those legs when they're slightly tired in that okay, second half. Welcome to today's national trophy and let's final. take a listen in to team. our referee, Ben Griffiths. Exeter, you're the listening team. This is the coin we use. The Buffalo logo is heads, the Union Jack football is tails. The Buffalo logo is heads, the Union Jack football is tails. You're the visiting team. And it, oh, that means you've won the toss. What are you going to do? You want to take the ball? Okay, which way, way do you want to kick, guys? Okay, turn with your back to the end of your family, so enter you, come with me this way. Okay. Enter you have won the toss and we'll receive. Hi right, guys, kick off in 30 seconds, please. Well, they have a confirmation from the coin toss. NTU have won the toss and they will receive at the kickoff. Tash, what do you make of that decision? Interesting. Um, yeah, they're, they're receiving first, but I guess I, I guess if they if they want to kind of put the pressure on uh, on the demons to, to go out and yeah to try and take that second uh, half by storm, it's up to them, isn't it? It's up to them. Well, the destiny of these teams is in the hands of the players themselves. And I'm just so excited. I want this game to get started, Tash. We've been building up to it all week long now, and I'm sure the players for one as well will be just as excited and just as raring to go. So we've just got a slight delay whilst the referee is uh, fiddling with his communications, Tash. So for now, talk to me, what would you do in this position? You are about to receive the kickoff. You've got your helmet on. Are you looking to run this back? Would you prefer a fair catch in the end zone? What's your preference, really, from the kickoff? I think it'll all depend as to... Um, they'll have been studying the kicker and they'll have been studying how far the kicker can 
kick the ball. Um, and I think from that, it will depend how far the ball goes down the field as to whether they take the fair catch or not. You won't want to take the fair catch if it's on that five yard line or somewhere close to that, that area, you will want to run the ball forward. So I think that if you've got some smart, smart returners, they will be able to make the call themselves and they will be able to read it perfectly. We're looking for smart returns. You've got to play with your eyes up in this match, haven't you? People always talk about you need big, strong muscles, really fast legs, but actually you need a good top two inches because that, of course, is where your brain is. And you've got to use your brain to play this game after all. But here we go. We are ready to get underway. The University of Exeter kicking us off and Nottingham Trent will receive the ball from kickoff. And they will return with Joe Parton. Parton trying to find a hole that his team are making for him, but he is going to be dragged down. That's a good start there from the Trent number four. Yeah, I think that, like what we said about smart returning, I think there was a bit of a fumble to begin with, and he couldn't really get hold of the ball, but in that moment, he had to run it. That wasn't enough field position to keep them safe. It's those opening nerves that are getting in the way at the moment, isn't it? Those... Yeah, the team did well there to really rally around and try and make those blocks to give him a space and give him a hole to run through. And that's what's exactly needed on a return. You need to spot your holes and run straight through them. And he tried to do exactly that. Well, this is our first look then at the Nottingham Trent University offence and what they're going to be able to do with Chris Venegas standing in at quarterback. Here we go. Play action, Venegas looking downfield for a receiver. He might have someone deep downfield, and he does, and Ben Harrison, Harrison completely unlocked and getting huge yardage for Nottingham Trent right from the get-go. Tash, that is what you call an opening. That's exactly what you need. We said that if the wind holds out, they will be able to get down the field, and that's exactly what Venegas has done. He spotted his receiver. He liked that receiver, saw the space, saw, saw that he had that distance on the on the on the DB and I think that was the key thing he managed to get that backside of the of the DB and that's exactly what he needed to get down the field they're now in the red, red zone straight away that's a massive that's a 50 plus yard game right at the get-go there from Nottingham Trent University and again another lovely little gain there and it might still be alive actually here for Nottingham Trent they are getting ever closer to the extra line if they can score within the first minute of play Tash that's a huge statement yeah that's a massive statement and it's one that they need to make I think like what we said they've had the more physical uh, run up in this in this play in, in this playoffs and in the whole season so this is exactly what they needed and they're coming out and showing what they can do Well, there's Vanegas, hands it off straight away to the brilliant Adwoila Coca. And Coca is in for the first touchdown of the game. What a start from Nottingham Trent. What we saw there was the O-line doing exactly what they needed to do. He wanted to run straight down the middle and they provided that gap. They managed to get their blocks in perfect so that they're, it was basically like parting the Red Sea. The gap opened, he ran straight through and was able to get the touchdown and get the ball over the line. Well, talk about a way to begin a match. Adwoila Coca has been on fire all season for Nottingham Trent, making yards like they were giving them away for free and it's paid dividends here in the final. First touchdown of the game for Nottingham Trent, signal up, extra point to come. And it's a lovely easy kick for Tom Giles and that is the extra point, 7-0 to the good for the boys in pink and it's advantage Nottingham Trent right at the beginning of this game. I think they're showing their experience straight from the get-go. We talk about Venegas and what Venegas can do, but actually Nottingham Trent have been in this situation so many times in the playoffs and actually they know how to play this perfectly. A special uh, mention must be said actually to Coca because that looked incredibly easy when he was running it in. But Tash, you can assure me from real life experience, it, it's far from it. Oh no, like as a running back, you're basically aiming to get three yards maximum like every single play because you know how much um, how much energy you're going to be expelling like throughout the game. But also like normally a running back can only get the three yards. Like every coach will tell you your aim is to get three to four yards every play to get to that first down and that's all you're looking for. So he's managed to push straight through and also it wasn't even pushing straight through. I think he had two guys on him well there you go showing his strength from the get-go there Coca and won't be the last that we see of it by any stretch of the imagination and he's one to keep your eye on going forward into the rest of this fixture as well but here we go Trent with their first kickoff and Weston Perry standing just off of his kicker Giles will be chasing this one down with great intent and that's bounced beyond everyone on the extra camp 
and out through the end zone. Tash, explain for everyone at home what's just happened there because it looks like a bit of confusion from Exeter. Yeah, I think their communication went in the backfield and I'll be honest, this shows exactly what actually happens if you get scored on straight away. Your confidence does dip slightly and it does actually seem that in that situation, neither one of them wanted to go for the ball, which instantly made it bounce back into the backfield and that's it. You're starting on a really bad field position now. Now we are talking about them being in a bad position right now, but they will receive at that second half restart and that will be important for them surely as we see them pack down for the first time here we go good snap to Ben Abbott and he handed it off to his running back there and it's a nice little bit gain of about three yards there for Exeter University yeah that's exactly what they need as I just said with running backs you're looking to get three or four yards every single play because as long as you get three or four yards you are getting that first down Got a delay here in play, just uh, some communication between officials, but also coaches on the sideline to their players. Abbott takes the snap again, once more handing off to one of his running backs. But they're brought down before they can even really get going, Tash. This is a great start for the Nottingham Trent defensive line. Yeah, he seems to be going to Carl West, number 45, a lot. And I think that that shows that he has trust in him. But also, he is he is really he looks really strong. So it looks like he can push through that line. But what Nottingham Trent are doing is they're really like closing those gaps so that there is no space for you to actually power through. Um, and I think that, that you can see them constantly switching up their defense, even right now. Well, here comes Abbott again, standing over the ball. And before, once again, before the running back can even get going, he's brought down and Carl West doesn't know what's really hit him because Nottingham Trent came flying through at the line there. Yeah, they really did. And it looks like that, I'm trying to see who, who, was, the, who was the rusher there because that was absolutely incredible. The way that they didn't, I mean, the Demons didn't even see him coming. It looks like, was that number one, Ben Harrison? We'll definitely be able to take a look at it on some replays of this first quarter when we get to the end of the action. But for now, the ball is still with Exeter University as they punt this one away. And it will be Nottingham's turn to run it back. Trent's turn, I should say. Otherwise, people from that university will get a bit cross with me, Tash. But it's gone out of bounds on the sideline. But possession will be with Nottingham, Trent. And at the moment, I think it's fair to say that advantage is still very much with the boys in pink. Yeah, massively. I think that when you look at what Nottingham Trent are doing, um, that physicality on the defence has shown through. The physicality on offence has shown through. Exeter haven't really, haven't really shown either of that right now, and they really need to either wake up or find out, find that 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 missing piece. Well, setting up nice and wide here, actually, the line of scrimmage, Nottingham Trent. Sometimes teams get a bit too narrow in the opening exchanges. Looking to use a lot of width on this pitch. Venegas once more hands it off, though, to his running back. And they're not going to make many yards through the extra defence on this occasion. And so Sahota is brought down. Or Coco, sorry, I should say, is brought down. Yeah, I think what they were trying to do is exactly what they did on that touchdown play where they just wanted him to, to do a dive play straight through the middle. And it just didn't necessarily work because because extra straight away you managed to close those gaps which meant zero space for Coker to get through. Well even one or two yards is better than zero yards Tash especially when we've still got eight minutes in this first quarter. And now we're getting ready for second and eight here from Nottingham Trent University. Motion on the play, Venegas standing back, he's got a lot of time on the ball if he wants to look downfield. He's got a bit of pressure coming on him though, he might find the target still! Great tackle in the backfield from Exeter University's Lachlan Brown. Yeah, I think that they didn't want what happened on that first play to happen again. So they made sure, if you actually looked, they the, the, um, the receiver was in double coverage in that moment. And in that in that situation, you do not be throwing into that space. And I must say, that's the first time in this match that we've seen Chris Venegas under significant pressure at the line of scrimmage, Tash. Uh, Exeter clearly choosing to switch their tactics up and put the pressure on. Yeah, I was quite surprised that um, there, was, there wasn't any flags on that play because if you didn't see, the, the O-line actually were chasing but grabbing at the same time. So that was quite surprising. Motion once again from Nottingham Trent, Venegas opting to try and travel to one side, looking for the target downfield and gets it with Ben Harrison. 
That's a lovely gain and a first down for Nottingham Trent University. Really good quick thinking there from the quarterback. Yeah, that just shows his experience right there and shows his knowledge of football because the fact that he managed to get out of the pocket but also while he was being rushed and managing to still make the play. Yes, it was low, but having a receiver like Harrison to be able to slide down, get the ball, that's exactly what you need. That's by no means a, an easy feat for Harrison to achieve, sliding and catching and getting low when you're above six foot. That is the challenge. But here come Nottingham Trent, first and ten on this latest drive. Hands off to Coker. Coker might see a little bit of a gap. Good gain there from the running back going through the middle. He's probably got a good four or five yards there off the first drive. Yeah, really, really nice running from Coker there. And once again, just showing his strength because managing to get past two guys, then needing and further two guys to actually take him down just proving how strong he is as a running back and why he is Venegas's first choice in that backfield. I actually did him a disservice. It was a good six-yard gain there, actually, for Nottingham Trent. So it's second and four for the boys in pink. Let's see what Venegas decides to pull out of the bag now for the boys. And he hands it straight off to Coker, who's looking to go straight through the bag. That's a huge tackle from Exeter's Owen Beaumont. Fantastic work from the green player at the line. That was phenomenal. Yeah, that was perfect because if you actually saw they had a blocker and so they had two in the backfield, having that blocker in means that you've got more of a chance to create the hole and create the create the dive that, 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 that the running back really needs. And actually, when you looked at that blocking effort, it didn't pull through and it didn't come out the way that NTU really wanted it to. Well, it's third and three now for Nottingham Trent University. I think it's fair to say the demons have finally woken up because they charged through that line like I've never seen before. And here comes the noise from the crowd for the Exeter defensive effort. And Venegas clearly changing the call, getting vocal at the line of scrimmage. But here come Trent. Venegas looks out wide, finds his man, but they've dropped it. It's a fumble from Joe White, the number 85. Big mistake there from Trent. And it's looking like it's going to be a fourth down and punt. And that's really disappointing. And sometimes when you are a receiver and you have that moment where you, you've got your back turned to where the defence is going to be running at you and you jump up to catch it, if you hear footsteps, that's the reason, that's what the defence is there to do. They're there to put you off and they're there to actually make you make those mistakes. And that's exactly what the Demons did. And let's just quickly clarify, Tash, uh, that was uh, an incompletion, not a fumble, sorry, my mistake. But can you quickly describe the differences for us for anyone watching at home for the first time? Yeah, a fumble is when you have control of the ball and then um, it either gets stripped from you and it rolls out. Um, or an incompletion is where you go to catch the ball and you then drop it. So you need to have at least, I think it's two or three strides before it would then be classed as a fumble. That's a very high snap for Tom Giles to take, but that's an excellent punt downfield. And his Nottingham Trent teammates are watching that to the line. Wow, what a kick. That was perfect. That was point perfect. That's exactly what you want. You want them to start from that one or two line because if you can push them back and you can potentially score a safety, because if you're getting into that backfield, which we've seen the NTU defense do, we have seen them be able to get into that backfield and tackle, like extra are going to have to do something to get out of that backfield because right now you are snapping into your end zone. And no one wants to be snapping into their end zone. At the end of the day, that is the most dangerous place of the field to be is in your own end zone. Because as you rightly point out, you will just concede a safety. You will concede those two points. And now here come Exeter out from said end zone. Abbott hands off to his running backs once again. But they can't make any yards. Are they tackle back into the end zone? No, just shy. Yeah, they just managed to get out and back onto the line of scrimmage meaning that luckily the safety was saved but that's a very unnerving start look it's second down and they've still got 10 yards to make they're camped on their own line Tash this is really nervy moments yeah if anything you want to get as much as yeah you want to get those power plays through you actually want to be getting like a quick short pass away to make sure that you can get out of that space because if you can't get the running play moving because the NTU defense is stacked up how are you going to get anything going well, it looked like people didn't know what was going on there, but Extra somehow managed to get that away. And it was so close to going downfield into the hands of James Bush. It was a perfect, perfect throw from Ben Abbott, but the big 82 just couldn't control it over the shoulder. Yeah, there's a lot of confusion at the start of the play. As, as we saw the snap happen, nobody really moved, and it actually looked like maybe somebody thought there was a false start. Um, and so I think due to that, people didn't necessarily move. There was a lot of um, confusion in the backfield. 
and it seems that there is still some confusion now as the players pause for a second. But I tell you what, that incompletion means it's third and ten now for Exeter camped out on their own line. If they're not careful here and don't make some yards, they're going to punt from inside their own end zone. Here they go, trying to run it out and running it out into safety as well. Just short of the first down. And that gives Exeter a little bit of breathing room to get that kick away with. Yeah, number 45, Carl West there coming through with the carry once again, being their go-to guy for those big power runs. Oh, it's looking like it is, it is a first down. So it's first and 10 for Exeter University. Call coming in from the side of the field there. And let's see what happens here. Abbott standing in, ready to take the ball from his line. Snapped to Abbott, hands it off straight away to the big number 45, making it all the way through for another first down is the wonderful Carl West. And the demon is alive, Tash. Yeah, that is their go-to guy now. He is he is the one that's making waves for them. He's the one that's keeping them going and keeping the momentum going. And I think as long as you've got him still in a good place and running as strongly as what he is, you can keep getting the ball to him because they cannot seem to get him down. Well, that certainly won't be the last time that we see him taking the ball. Confirmed it is definitely a first down. So first and ten again for the University of Exeter. Let's see if they choose to run the play again. Abbott hands it off to another one of his running backs. But they're going to go around the outside and almost pirouetting out the tackle as well. And pirouetting out around the far side and finally thrown out from the sideline. That was a great play from Oluwase Paul. That was textbook running back play. Yeah, that was perfect. I think the great thing is there is he managed to spin out of a tackle, but actually NTU not getting low enough in their tackles. I know that we've spoken about this previously at Brit Bowl about getting low, taking the taking the legs really, because if they don't have their legs to run, they cannot run. And that's exactly what NTU didn't do in that play. God, you knew that Tromish sound like my old rugby coach. Uh, but here come Exeter, first and 10, and the throw over the top from Abbott was just a little bit too high for Kasper Stock. And that is a slightly missed opportunity for Exeter because they went nice and quickly looking to catch Trent off guard. But it means that we're going to have to reset the play. Orders barking in from the sideline and it means that Trent actually have a chance to reset Tash. Yeah, it seemed to be a rushed play there in that moment. Um, what we saw was kind of not necessarily confusion, but just wanting to get that ball away. And I don't think that that was the right call to make. Abbott hands it off once again to one of his running backs, but they are shut out by the brick wall that is the Trent D-line. That was a big impact. Yeah, we're seeing right now that, that they can see that their running plays, um, Exeter's running plays, are, are actually the things that are carrying them forward. So I think now what NTU are doing is the moment that they see anybody in that backfield that can be a threat is making sure that that line is stacked so that then you're not able to actually get through and make the holes that you want. Um, we haven't necessarily seen Exeter do anything in the air yet. And that's the reason why, yeah, we're going to be seeing a lot more running plays from Exeter, I think. But NTU will be able to read that. Oh, that was interesting. That was like something I strictly come dancing here at Bucks Big Wednesday. It's third and six for the University of Exeter. Is there something special for them? Paul is absolutely creamed by Joe Parton. What a tackle from the Nottingham Trent player. Wow, yes, what a play that is. And from the looks of it, that helmet is giving me Hertfordshire Cheetah vibes. And as we saw, Hertfordshire Cheetahs are now going into being a premiership team. You can see where he is getting his skills from. But that was a pe perfect play by number four there, Joe Parton. Let's take a look at a replay of it now. Paul gets on the ball, boom, lined up. That was fantastic. Hang it in the Louvre, Tash. That's <laughs> art. Punt now from the University of Exeter. It is downfield. Trent are going to leave it, which is an interesting tactic because you never know where this ball is going to bounce, Tash, especially, we must comment on it, especially on the artificial turf. Yeah, I think that with that, you could see as the, the ball was angling down um, that it was going to go to the side and it wasn't going to have a one of those dodgy back bounces um which is actually it was it was good uh good read there by i think ben harrison um who is the who was the returner in that moment um to actually just leave it so that they could start on the 20 on i think it was on the 25 which is actually a good field position well harrison will get straight back into position and look to offer himself to venegas as an option he's already been used deep downfield by the quarterback and whether the qb looks to go to him again remains to be seen but here we go nottingham trent first and ten with them in possession, counting down 90 seconds 
to the end of the first quarter. And he hands it off to Koka. Koka jumping over the linemen that are down on the floor. And he makes a couple of yards there for Trent. And it just gives him a good base to build from, doesn't he? Yeah, I think with Koka there, you can really see that he, he understands when to bounce because he was going towards one direction, saw that that hole had been filled and instantly bounced out into the middle. Yes, then once again getting brought down by a defensive lineman, but in that moment, you really need a running back who can read that bounce out and that's exactly what Koka can give you. Well, here we go once again with Nottingham Trent. So second down and five. Venegas giving a lot of orders. He's obviously changed his mind once again from the huddle. And it is with the QB. He's looking downfield. He's looking deep downfield. But he's going to go through a hole. Venegas now traveling with the ball. Going through the extra line. Out to the edge. Finally brought down before he can make too many dangerous yards. But it will be a crucial first down. That's a really good read there from Venegas. He saw that it wasn't necessarily that he didn't have any receivers free. It was more that there was more space and holes for him to be able to get up the field and just get that first down. And that's all that he needed to do. He looked and he saw that the D-line had parted like the Red Sea. So he thought, I'm a Moses it. And he went through. That took a while for you to get touched, but I, I'm glad that you are enjoying that along with everyone at home. But here we go now. First and ten for Nottingham Trent. And the Renegades handed off to Coco again. Lovely little shimmy from the 33 and bouncing off the first initial tackle. Great gain from the running back. Yeah, that was a gain of about six there. And that's exactly what you want from your running back. But once again, it's going to Coker, and Coker is your guy to be able to bounce around and make those defensive players miss. Um, I think that it'll be interesting to see what happens when they need to be bringing in the, the, the other running backs. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens there. On our clock, that is the end of the first quarter. And the officials do call it as well. This is the end of the first quarter. Well, that's the end of the first quarter. We're getting ready for the second quarter just as the players switch side. Uh, Tash, your initial thoughts on what we've just watched in these opening exchanges. I think it's advantage Nottingham Trent. The scoreboard thinks it's advantage Nottingham Trent. Is that how you're reading the game? Yeah, it's definitely advantage Nottingham Trent at the moment. I think that like when you look at Exeter, it's taken them too long to get out of the to get to get out of the of the gates. And I think that in the last few plays, we've really seen them starting to move more with their running backs. But if they don't, if they can't get that air play as well going, then they've got no hope really. Because at the moment, when you look at Nottingham Trent, they've got the they've got the ball going through the air and they've got the ball on the ground, and they have both both of those those opportunities. Um, Exeter just don't have that. They have one thing going for them right now, and NTU can shut that down. Will Simon Stad will be talking about that now in the little break with his team and maybe questioning Abbott on why he's not using the air a little bit more. I don't even necessarily think he's going to be questioning. I think at the moment there doesn't seem to be that relationship that they've, that, that I guess like Nottingham Trent have managed to form between their quarterback and, and wide receivers because we haven't seen that relationship yet come out. And maybe there is just a bit of miscommunication um, between the players and the quarterback that has, that has meant that he's had to rely more heavily on the, on the running back core. Quick word on the weather as well, actually. It's beautiful sunshine now in Loughborough, and we had a huge grey cloud over us earlier. I had to put my jacket on because it was getting so chilly and windy. But where's this come from, Tash? Does this change the complexion ever so slightly? Oh, massively. This actually does give you the opportunity to mix it up and choose whatever play you wish. Well, it's with Trent now. And it's back with Venegas, hands it off straight away. Coker going around the edge, but tackled before he can even hit second gear by Ben Hellett. And Exeter will bring Trent's latest attack to an end. Yeah, that was really that was a really good read by Exeter there. Um, but I think that just showing that it mean it took took four people to take Coker down. Um, if that's what Exeter are going to have to do every single time, um, they're really going to have to find their energy coming from somewhere because you need that taken down. You need you need Coker taken down from the moment that um, that the first person latches on. Time out for an injured player. Uh, there's an injured player that's coming off the field now. It is actually Ben Harrison, that number one for Exeter, who made the tackle. So we're going to have a timeout whilst the injury is replaced. And obviously player safety is of paramount importance to everyone uh, at Baffer. Ben Heller, sorry. Everyone at Baffer and indeed everyone at the uni ball level too. 
Yeah, injuries are so easy to come by. I mean, like, I just know from my seasons of playing in uni ball how easy it is to get injured because you are giving it everything and you are so constantly um, exhausted from doing play after play after play. Um, so it's understandable as to why um, players in this instance coming to the end of the season are are suffering. Well, here is Venegas standing over the ball, barking the orders. QB's going to get it on the snap. Here we go. Play action looking downfield. Venegas hands it off. Lovely to Harrison. Harrison making a lovely bit of yardage, getting the first down for his side. And Nottingham Trent are really firing on all cylinders. Yeah, that link up there is becoming so important for, for, um, for the Renegades right now. Um, I think that we're, we're actually seeing Ben Harrison not only play in that wide receiver position, but also... I think we've seen Ben Harrison playing on defense too. And I think that just shows how much of an important part he, he plays on this on this team, not only making the plays, but making the play making the tackles too. You've got to do it all. You can't just have one job that you just stick to and don't do anything else. You've got to be a very dynamic player in this game. Here we go. Venegas standing over the ball, hands it off to Coca. Coca going around the outside of that D-line, and still he goes. Coca driving those legs. A good gainage of three yards there for the Trent running back. Yeah, as we say, that's all you need, those three yards. He did have to put a bit more effort in, though, to get those three yards than what you typically would, um, as initially you just want to run up the middle and get those three yards, whereas there seemed to be a lot of energy exasperated uh, going the going the long way round. Um, but, yeah, Exeter did really well there to read that, get players out, get men out to that side. Well, let's see if Exeter can continue to shut him out because if they don't find a way to quieten down Coker's game, then unfortunately he's going to run riot all afternoon around them. And here come Trent once more, the renegades of Nottingham. Play action to Venegas. Again, Venegas looking downfield to see what options are available. It's a lovely long pass into brilliant open space, but it's a fumble on the play. Somehow Trent had managed to pick it up and keep it alive. Initially, the fumble came in from Sosa, but Harrison was there to dive on the ball and keep Trent in possession. That was such a good play. You had you you had um, number 14, yeah, so Sosa, free, completely free. And when we watch this replay right now, you watch. And it's the drop back from Venegas that makes it. Look how much space that he's got to be able to loft that ball into the air. Right, his right. Oh, and it was the tackle from number one. Ben Hellett, he's come straight back on from that injury assessment. It's great to hear that he's able to continue. He's made the vital tackle, the vital intervention. But somehow, Trent still in possession and really knocking on the door once again to get another score in this trophy final. Here we go. First and ten for Nottingham Trent. Venegas. Doesn't hand it off, he's looking downfield, he's looking for options still, trying to escape away from the team. He might be forced all the way out of play here. He's going to go himself and slides to keep it safe. It's not enough for a first down, but it is enough to keep Nottingham Trent in possession. Yeah, just enough. And I think that we actually saw, I think it was Ben Harrison wa physically waving for the ball who was free, but it was it just, it was just too late, unfortunately, because that was when the extra demons started charging down Venegas um, and who needed to then scramble out of the pocket to slide downfield. You can see him just having a word on the sideline here about what should happen next. And Venegas is going to be the communicator. He's going to be the messenger from the touchline to the huddle. And we await to see exactly what the play will be for Nottingham Trent. Because this is a scoring position right now, Tash. Yeah, definitely. We've seen, uh, we've seen Venegas be able to loft the ball through the air a fair few yards, let's say. Um, and so this is a really good opportunity to either hit those corners or hit straight down the field. Venegas giving yourself a bit of time and space. He's under pressure, looking downfield. Almost, almost an interception for Exeter's number 33, Amalak Zahota. That was very, very close. Yeah, that was really close. Um, as, as we saw the play develop there, when I saw Venegas looking towards the side, I was, I was a bit concerned because of the fact that if we watch this, re yeah, watch this replay here, you watch the extra defense and they are clearly in zone coverage right now. Um, and that safety was just inches away, inches away from, from making the play. <laughs> the screams are going in from the sideline. Come on, demons! <laughs> Well, they've it's really got to find the demon within them in they, defensive they time, do, haven't they? They do. Here we go then. Nottingham Trent. Third and three. Venegas looking downfield for the throw. He might have to go himself. There's not many options available. He's under some significant pressure here. 
Lovely evading of the tackle. Still looking downfield is Venegas. And wide open. He's got a friend with him. That's a great bit of play from Nottingham Trent. And then number 85, Joe White. Great, great read of the play from Venegas. But once again, we big, picked him up in the build-off. He is paying dividends so far in this match. Massively. I think without him, and Nottingham Trent would not be where they are right now. He is, the, his ability to be able to read the play, let the play develop, but also make those, make those key calls. I mean, we watched this replay. He had to hold on to that ball for so long before he could actually find a receiver that was free. So that just shows that Exeter are doing their job well. But at the same time, yeah, we, we look at what Joe White had to do. Time out, NTU. That's the first time out of the half. That's the first time out called of the half. And it's come at a vital moment because Exeter were doing really well in zonal defence and zonal coverage. But you might argue, Tash, had they adopted a man-on-man -man play there in defence, they would have shut down Venegas earlier and that play would never have happened. Yeah, possibly. But I think they have done really well because it's fourth down and they've actually forced Nottingham to go for the three-point instead of the touchdown. I mean, you never know in a final cause, because... As we know, finals create big plays. So for all we know, they could fake it and try and get the touchdown. But at this point, they're 7-0 seven, they're seven up. There's no point in doing that. Just get the three points in and go even further ahead. Just get the three points, go even further ahead. It's just easy, isn't it, Tash, when you put it yeah. like that? But it's certainly not that easy when you're actually out on the pitch yourself. Yeah, definitely not. And I think this is where um, it will show if Nottingham Trent's uh, special teams are just as good as what their offense have been showing. Because, um, yeah, you want across the board, um, you want across the board your defense, offense and special teams to step up. And once again, we see them come out and they have decided not to punt. They've decided to go for it. They're going for it on fourth down. They obviously feel confident in their QB Venegas, but Venegas not comfortable to it play is, man down. It is fourth and inches. It is fourth and inches. It's fourth and inches and... We're just trying to listen in to the referees to see what's going on here. We're, we're awaiting a call that's going to come in. a time out called by Exeter, number 50. That's their first time out of the half. So in that moment there, Nottingham Trent were fourth and inches away from getting that first down, which is why, understandably, they would go for it. So that's a timeout called by Exeter. That's why we had the sudden delay in play. We've got confirmation there. We were, we were scrambling Tash and I to try and find out what on earth had just happened. But here we go. Fourth and inches for Nottingham Trent after the timeout called by the University of Exeter. The Demons stopping the play. Coker gets the handoff from Venegas. Coca driving for the line. Coker is a matter of inches away. <laughs> it's a first down. First and goal for Nottingham Trent University. That was a huge drive from Coker. Anything less, and that would have been a huge loss. I mean, that's what he's been doing all day, making those dive plays, showing his strength. And that's what Nottingham Trent needed in that moment, especially after they called a timeout, Exeter called a timeout. You've got to keep your head in the game. Well, here we go. First and goal now for Nottingham Trent. Venegas standing over the ball. Play action now. Venegas hands off to Coker. Coker going through the middle. Coker surely for the line. Stopped short is the call. So it'll be second and goal, Nottingham Trent. And Coker looks frustrated that he wasn't able to score there, Tash. Yeah, that was a big stop by Exeter. And I mean, we, we heard from our, from our commentary box that the contact that happened there. And that was what Exeter needed to do, keep pushing them back. But at the same time, they've still got a second down, they've still got a third down. And if needed, they've still got a fourth down. If anyone was wondering what tectonic plates look like when they collide, just replay that with Coker meeting the Exeter D-line because that's exactly what happens. And here he goes again. Venegas didn't want to hand it off to Coker. It's a fake from the QB and he's in the end 
zone for the score! Oh, that was such a good play to watch. It was so good and it was so smart by Venegas there. So smart. The way that Venegas held onto that ball, spinning Coke around to the point where he was like, I am keeping hold of this ball. I am keeping on going and actually completely throwing off the Exeter defence there. Absolutely per point perfect for play. He's done a Pat Daly there. Oh, I mean, what do you expect from, a, from another Midlands team? <laughs> <laughs> Well, here we go. The extra point going in now for Nottingham Trent. And they got Tom Giles standing over the ball, ready to send this one between the sticks. And Giles adds the extra point. So it's 14-0 in favour of Nottingham Trent University. And the iconic Pink Brigade are marching further into the lead here at Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance. And let's rewatch this touchdown right here. And that was absolutely perfect by Venegas just look at how well he held onto that ball completely fooling the Exeter defense that he was going to be hanging that ball off to Coca that's exactly what you need from a QB is smart play smart thinking and I love those play actions because that is the moment where you can really fake a defense out and create those moments of brilliance well, there you go. To the untrained eye, that was a moment of brilliance. But actually, Tash, that was fantastic team play because everyone had to be doing their job in order for that trick play to work. Yeah, I think this shows exactly what Nottingham been doing this whole match so far. Nottingham Trent. Nottingham Trent. Nottingham Trent. Sorry. Jason's here. He'll get cross <laughs> oh, with you, Tash. Nottingham Trent. We not can't the, hide from not, him not, in this, not just uh, the only Nottingham. <laughs> Well, here come Trent from the kickoff. It's a lovely deep kick, and so Exeter are going to look to return this now with Oliver Murden. Murden handed it off initially as well. And ben Heller is brought down. Yeah, we're seeing so many more of these switch plays during kickoff now, um, and so many more returning teams actually utilising those trick plays to try and put off um, the, the the defensive the defensive side to make sure that they can try and get down the field. Sometimes it works, and in that case, it did work as they got a larger gain than what they would have if they had taken the knee. Well, here we go then. Exeter University, first and ten for them. Their first real attack in offence that they've had for a while, but they are... On this occasion, far away from their own line, so they can breathe a little bit easier than the last time we joined them. Abbott now handing off to his running back, Paul. And Paul made a good couple of yards there for his team. And as we've said, one or two yards is still better than zero, Tash. Yeah, definitely. Getting one or two yards, like what you say, as a running back, is exactly what you need to do. Um, you're still getting down the field and actually putting them in a good position to try and put that ball through the air and just get those extra yards that you need to get the first down. Here we go then, second and seven for Exeter University. Abbott looking deep downfield for the intended receiver and he won't find them because he was just too deep there for James Bush. And so Bush will go marching back to the line, <laughs> looking very frustrated as well about it as well. Yeah, when you look at what Venegas can do with the receivers, especially when you look at that um, the, the play that was... Tech, uh, initially a fumble um, Venegas is getting it to the NTU receivers like point perfect exactly where the receiver is going to end up whereas that's not necessarily happening for the extra demons at the moment so I think for this especially for the third and fourth quarters they need to be working that and ensuring that it's actually direct to the receivers well Abbott seems like he's got some demons that he needs to shake off then as this game looks to continue bit of movement there at the line of scrimmage but play action has it handed off once again to Paul but Paul is ushered out to that sideline and that's a big tackle from Joe Pardon bringing the Exeter player down before he can get going. Yeah, we're seeing, we're hearing more and more of the same names coming from the NTU side, but also I think Exeter are really relying on some of their key players to make big plays, and that's just not happening at the moment for them. Well, Tash, you said at the break at the end of the first quarter, they needed to look to the air more. They needed to look to the air. And when they tried the air just then, it wasn't very accurate. They tried the floor again, and it didn't seem to work. Paul showing the sideline. And, that wow, they're going to go for it again. It's fourth down. But Exeter have really, well, excuse my pun, but they've really got to take a punt at this. And here comes Abbott. Hands it off nicely to Paul, who switches the play. And Paul is in a lot of space to exploit now. Going down the far touchline. Paul still going. Finally bundled out into touch by Ethan Sassman. But that's a huge gain from the Exeter running back. Yeah, that's exactly what they've been needing this whole match is... That, that one player that can that can switch up the play, 
and give them some momentum. And we've been seeing that a little bit in um, in number in number 45, Carl West, but we haven't seen that from really any other player. But as you said, Paul in that moment just really actually pulled through for them. Oluwase Paul playing superbly so far in this match. Won't be the last time we see him on the ball. Abbott now standing, ready to take the snap. First and ten, extra university play action. Handed off to the big man, Carl West. But West can only make about a yard before he is stopped by that Trent brick wall. Yeah, I don't necessarily. I think because, because Trent do have such a big wall in front of um, in front of the running backs, those die plays aren't necessarily working. But what they did with with Oluwase Paul, where they did that small trick play, managing to switch it over, switch over sides, get that speed in, and I think that's where um, Exeter can really pull through is if they have that speed. Well, here we go. It's second and eight now for the University of Exeter. Still looking to get some points on the scoreboard. Abbott hands it off once again to West. West starts to bound forwards and he's finally brought down. Good read from the Trent defence. Yeah, really good read from the Trent defence, but also it's whether has Paul managed, uh, sorry, has um, West managed to make the first down. I think that West is just short of a, by a yard. So they'll be going to the third down right now. Two yards. Yeah, just short there by two yards. You can see at the top of the screen where the markers are. Big, bright orange things. You can't miss them, Tash. If you do, then you should go to Specsavers. Other opticians are available. <laughs> but here come Exeter now. Taking a look downfield is Abbott. Abbott's going to send it downfield too. Is there a trip in the backfield? The Exeter fans are complaining, but the players on the pitch certainly aren't. No, I don't think that was a trip. I think that was actually diving for the play i'm just i'm just looking at our screen right now and it didn't it didn't really look like that the the db was actually close enough to make the trip um on the on the player right there but as you say i might need to go to spec savers so you know <laughs> <laughs> well we've got a fourth and two now for exeter once again they're taking a punt on this play and they're going to see if they can create some magic with it abbott hands it off straight away though to west he only needs to make two yards and will he he does move those chains of the calls coming from the crowd. And of course, Dash, that means they have indeed got the first down. Yeah, they've got the first down. And I'm actually, I, I, it's not that I'm shocked, but I am quite surprised with how many extra supporters that are here today. Because as we know, Nottingham Time Trent, a lot closer to Loughborough than what Exeter is. So this is actually really great with the fans that Exeter have right now. We just had the call for a timeout for an injured player, Tash. So once again, we're going to take this quick timeout to have a word on either team. So Exeter have had a really, really good drive. They've gone from pretty much 15 yards away from their own line to that amazing run by Paul that got them downfield. And now they're in a situation where they can start thinking potentially maybe three points from a kick. Yeah, definitely. I think they're really capitalising on the fact that NTU actually looked tired. If you look at that last play where they managed to get the first down, some of the NTU players were really kind of lethargic in their movement. They weren't, they weren't progressing towards, towards the ball carrier. Um, and that's how West managed to make it through and get that first down. So actually... We're getting towards, I mean, we've got two minutes. We're, we're nearly at the two-minute warning um, in, in this first half of, of, of the final. And NTU are tiring, I think. Well, there's the play action. Abbott handed it off once again to West. And West rounding the Nottingham Trent defence and making some really good gains there for the Demons in green. I'm just looking at the side there. It looks like a gain of about six yards for the University of Exeter. Fantastic play from the running back. And just before you comment on the running back himself, special mention to those fans, it's a 201-mile trip Go, two one minutes, way. Two minutes, you've got so two left. 402 two left. miles in total. So every fan that's come down today to support the University of Exeter, or come up, sorry, Coach, has done minutes. a fantastic job. Yeah, I think we're hearing a lot more support for Exeter as well, which is actually, as I say, surprising because of that journey, but just shows how much support they have behind them to to try and win this match um, and, and yeah Carl West once again um, doing his job and getting those vital yards for the team if they can get a touchdown before the end of the half that would be amazing for them well Abbott handed it off once again to Paul who's broken through the first couple of tackles Paul all the way potentially he's in the end zone for a touchdown he's got Exeter on the scoreboard it's finally happened after the two minute warning and what a play from Oluwase Paul yeah, that's really exciting for Exeter and actually so deserved because they've been using West and, uh, well, Carl West and, and Oluwale Paul um, this whole first half trying to get them down the field. And finally, they've come up, they've got the touchdown. And that's exactly the momentum that they'll need to go into the second half to try and really 
make that um, make that gain back on NTU. You can see there from the replay the physicality of the number 14 to spin through the challenges to keep driving those legs towards the end zone and it has paid off. He's got six points on the board for Exeter finally and hopefully here comes the extra point for them too. Yeah, we talk about needing that speed and they really did need that oh, speed. Oh, it's a fake! It's a fake. They're going for the two points. They set up looking like they were going to kick up. They got it. They have. That's the extra two for Exeter. It's now 14-8 on the scoreboard. Tash Grum, where has this come from? Yeah, that's amazing. As I saw that shift, I was thinking, oh, they're going for it. But you saw the shift of getting those two big guys out, ready to be those lead blockers, so that they could instantly do a shotgun straight back, try and get through um, and push for that extra two points. And look at this. Yeah, exactly what they needed. It's James Bush that's taking it into the end zone. The ginormous number 82 certainly would take some stopping. And what a play from the University of Exeter. It is games like these that moments like that mm -hmm. become so important. Yeah, I think like what we said about the trick plays and finals, they work really well because you can have some moments of brilliance that like come from them. But also, I think that um, that J James Bush really deserved those points and really deserved that 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 momentum to go his way because of the fact that he's been pushing and pushing to try and make something happen as as a receiver and it hasn't been happening. So yeah. Really, really good props to him for making that happen. Is there nothing this man doesn't do? He's just about to do the kickoff for crying out loud. He he does everything for the University of Exeter. He kicks, he receives, he tackles. He scores. He's a unit. <laughs> and that's exactly what you need. Like what we said earlier about um, about about Harrison, about Ben Harrison, who was who's kind of been that like all round player for NTU. You need all round players at the uni ball level because at the end of the day you will have to play multiple people in multiple positions because you don't always get the numbers to have a full offense, a full defense and a full special team like what you see at that, especially national level or at that high level um, when you look at the senior, senior players and the senior teams. Well, here we go. We're getting ready to greet Nottingham Trent back into offense just before the stroke of halftime. We've got a minute 43 left on our clock. And let's see what Venegas has got up his sleeve before we approach half time. Venegas takes the play, hands this one off nicely. And Coker's making good yards here potentially for Trent if he can straighten up. And that's the problem sometimes with running backs when they want to run around the defence and the D-line. They end up going sideways and not forwards. Yeah, and I think what we saw there is a gain of two yards um, when actually the amount of running there was probably enough for a first down. Um, and that is one of the biggest problems when you've got speed backs. Um, being a speed back myself um, at uni ball level, I was told to instantly aim for the sideline because at the end of the day, you can get the most speed there because that isn't where that, that's where the big guys are not going to be able to get you. Um, and so so I think that's what Coco was trying to do, is get away from the guys that can make those tackles. Well, here comes Venegas again. He's got a bit of motion. He's moving around himself. Venegas going out towards the sideline. He's going to have to slide into touch. Well, and he just runs it out of play himself. He was looking downfield for the options. Harrison potentially might have been free, but he didn't have a clear eye line. And the number seven had the vision and had the knowledge that it was safe to keep that in hand. Yeah, I think that Venegas did really well there. Um, once again, he's making some really smart decisions. And if he's can't, if he doesn't see the play there, he's not going to throw the ball away um, because nobody wants to get picked, and especially not in this game at this moment when the score is now 14-8 to Nottingham Trent. They want to keep that lead, and no QB wants to get picked in the final. Just a quick word, actually, on Aid Coco is. He's a convert from the rugby game, so no wonder he's doing so well at running back. As we see him on the ball once again, not able to quite get through the tackles on that occasion, but we've already seen it work out really nicely. Rugby players transferring across into American football. I mean, particularly Christian Wade is one that stands out, ending up on the Buffalo Bills practice squad. Of course, he's now back in rugby. That but that will certainly that help him with his running game. Yeah, definitely. Um, we see, I think that, that was basically how the women's game came about was, um, especially when you look at the Birmingham Lions and their, I think it was eight-time championship winning team. The majority of their players were actually um, originally from rugby backgrounds that came across to American football and just wanted to try something different. Ended up then not only becoming champions with the Birmingham Lions, but then also joining uh, the Great Britain national team um, and becoming um, some of them becoming silver medalists there at, at Worlds a few a couple of years ago. 
And would you believe me if I told you it's only his second season with no previous American football experience? Yeah, it's incredible how, how you can have so many transferable skills within sport and especially rugby to American football. Slightly different shape balls. Much they say they're the same. They are definitely different. <laughs> they very much are. <laughs> they very much are. Very different games too. But here come Trent on the fourth down punt. And that's a bit of a ski whiff one from Giles because it got charged down and next to it just run it straight into the end zone. What on earth has just happened? I'm, I'm speechless, James. I'm speechless. What has just happened? As far from what I could see, it bounced off the back of, of Nottingham Trent's number 75 off the back of the helmet. That's, I mean, I might be getting the wrong number there, but it was definitely a 70 player and it came off the back of, of his head and they've taken the helmet off straight away of that player. Um, the kick went straight into the back and we're looking at the replay now. So the kick goes number in. Number 79. And number 79 goes down straight away because it just been, just been kicked at full pelt with an American football. That's Harry Washburn. So and it's now the play is a touchdown. After the play, dead ball. Sports like conduct. Number 77. So we're, we're all square now. It's being forced on the try. So we... So we've got in sportsmanlike conduct, there was a flag on the play, but that came after the touchdown. Yeah. So the points from extra do stand. We have a tied game. However, they have conceded a penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct. It was Cameron, not Cameron Jones being called out. It was Louis Burge being called out from the Exeter side. Yeah, and now Exeter actually have the opportunity to go, to go ahead. This kick could do it, and it's probably the biggest kick of his season for James Bush because on the stroke of half time just as they're actually about to receive the ball from kickoff they're suddenly ahead yeah and especially with how the momentum's been going you wouldn't have expected this to happen and the kick is charged down by Trent they might be able to collect this and run it the length but unfortunately the hands were not safe enough from Ethan Sassman Really good work from the Trent number five to charge that down, though, and keep the game tied. And all of a sudden, Trent had an opportunity to actually instantly respond. Yeah, both special teams coming through there, I think. So we first look at the extra special teams and really making a smart decision to charge down after noticing that the ball hadn't, in fact, gone up into the air and had, in fact, bounced off the players. So that was really smart there by the players to rush down on that to get the touchdown, firstly. And then secondly, in that moment there, the Nottingham Trent special teams coming through with the pump block, which then could have gave, given them an extra point if they had been able to scoop that up and run it to the end zone. However, not to be, but this has now meant that the second half, second half we could be going in as a tied match. We could indeed be going in with a tie game. If anyone joining us just now, you've missed out on an amazing half of American football. And actually, the scoreline doesn't reflect this fixture at all because Exeter scored completely against the flow of the game. Yeah, this is a really interesting setup as well that Exeter have got. Well, the kickoff has gone downfield. It's hit the pylon in the end zone as well. Lovely kickoff for the University of Exeter. Tash, we were interrupted very rudely by the kicker on the field. No, no, no. I was, I was just, I was just watching how Exeter are lining up. And typically, when you do, when you go for kickoff, you just have two even lines. And in that moment, they were almost mirroring um, the front line of um, of the returning team um, and having a, a, a zigzag. Uh, a const, I want to say a constellation, but it's not a constellation. <laughs> <laughs> a Constantina effect um, on their on, on their approach, which is is something that I haven't necessarily seen before. Um, but as we say, a final is where you bring out those, those uh, creative plays. You see it at every level of every sport. A final is where you throw everything at it and the real special plays make their way out of the locker. Here comes Coca for Trent. And unfortunately made more sideways yards than forward yards, but it'll be second down for Nottingham Trent University. Second and they're moving the pylon so it looks like it's going to be second and nine for them yeah that was really good by the extra demons there their defense um when we talk about going low in your tackles we don't talk about going low in a dangerous way we just talk about being able to stop the runner from pumping their legs because that is the only thing that is carrying them forward um and the extra demons managed to do that right there if you saw um by the by wrapping up well that's the half here the end. at Loughborough university 
Confirmation from the referee, that is the end of the first half. It's a tied game. It's 14 all currently between Nottingham Trent and the University of Exeter at Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance in this American Football Division 1 final. And really, it's anyone's game looking ahead into the rest of this match. Well, Tash, talking about the fact that it's anyone's game currently, what would you say to both of these sides going into the halftime break? Let's start off with Nottingham Trent University. They were closer ones to us. What would you be saying to them? Oh, I'll be totally honest. If I was their head coach right now, I would I would be going in on them. I would be there would be some stern words happening, mainly because they have been the ones that have been on top this whole match, and that last five minutes is what has caused them the greatest upset so far during the game. You can see that potentially they've been tiring, but that doesn't matter. This is a final. You should be playing right until the end. This is your last game of the season. And for some of these guys, this could potentially be their last uni ball game ever. You need to be giving it everything. And if they're not giving it everything right now, why not? Because at the end of the day, they were on top. They had momentum and they have now let that fall. So I'd be saying, why? Why are you letting this fall? This was your game to lose and now you are losing it. Similar message to the University of Exeter, would you say? I think with the University of Exeter, the coach can have some really good good points to bring up towards the end of that match to be able to take the momentum through because that's the key thing is that they have had the momentum towards the end of that first the that end of that second quarter, sorry. Um whereas whereas NTU didn't, they had more momentum at the start. You don't want that. So Exeter, you probably can be a bit more positive. And if I was the head coach, I would be a bit more positive. However, I'd be saying to them, do not come out and start this game how you start this second half, how you started the game. Because right now, we don't need that because we don't need you getting scored on on the first play again. Well, don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen, because we'll be right back with the second half of this fantastic Division 1 final game. It's tied at the moment between Nottingham Trent and Exeter University. We're going to leave you with some messages from our sponsors that join us for the highlights of that first half and indeed for the live second half. You really do your research into the private equity sector. Don't be put off by this kind of mysticism that potentially lies around it. Do your research not only to help with your application and interview process, but also to see if you personally would like to work at that place or that sector or that field. responsibility they give to each and every one of us in the business and with that comes a lot of trust. Three months into your training you could be uh, running the store on your own responsible for ordering all the stock making sure the staff are happy. Aldi really believes that young people can do great things. It's, it's definitely something that excited me and attracted me to the role. I felt really supported at Aldi from day one you're paired up with your mentor who is with you throughout your whole journey. You develop a really strong network with your peers, you can always pick up the phone to them. But you all work part of a team towards the common goal. I really valued my time in store because I think it's a really important part of you learning the practical day-to-day -day of store operations. It was actually really exciting and I really enjoyed it. It's, it's, it's a change every single day um, and that variety really uh, attracted me to the role. Singleton, sniping. Oh, Paul Brown, Paul! Oh, 
Tilly Smale is on the scoreboard, and Harvard University surely at this stage now. Harvard University, the women's national league champions. Destiny Day ends with Exeter as Buck Super Rugby national champions.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Loughborough University and to Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance. And we are still here on the Rugby One pitch, and I'm joined by Tash Crump. British American football legend and queen we should add as well the fact that you are still with me for this second half of action uh, is really testament that I'm not as annoying as my brother makes out sometimes Tash so thank you very much for coming back for another half American football action the game is tied at the moment 14 apiece you can see it on your screen there let's start by taking a look at the touchdowns from the first half Tash just talk me through what you like most about these plays 
I think with the NTU first touchdown especially, it was that um, the, the setup to the touchdown which I liked the most. So it was that pass to Ben Harrison. But this one in particular, um, when Coker got that first drive through, it was the fact it was such a simple play. It was just a simple dive play, but it was the fact that the, the O-line did their job immaculately making that hole, parting, as you say, like the Red Sea and really getting that in. And then this second one from... Um, <laughs> From, from our main man, that was the key play that actually really showed what NTU can do. Um, I'm a member of the Chris Venegas fan club, and yes, I'm also a, a, a member of the <laughs> Oloase Paul fan club because that is a stonking touchdown. Yeah, with that one there, that was he, he'd already shown his speed so many times in the first half, and he really deserved that touchdown. And as you say, spinning, diving out of the way to actually get to the end, and they needed that speed, they needed that momentum. And then this second one, um, yeah, the, the, the two-point from... Um, from the demons there that was that was the play that you never saw coming because that sudden switch at the end um, by James Bush uh, yeah we'd mentioned him a couple of times and then this mix up by NTU by their special teams um, number 79 I want to say getting hit in the back and number 11 from the extra demons taking it in there for the touchdown um, Tom Sager and we've actually I think it's Tom Tom Sager that I've got down here um, is, Tom Sager did Tom Sager there. is um, is a is a DB and play, has, and has previously been actually selected for the GB the main men um, who is head like the head coach is Mr. Jason Scott who I know that you've caught up earlier in the uni ball season. Oh, he gave me a big hug actually when I oh. saw him today, Jason. It was very nice of him. But no, you are right. Look, he was the starting safety against the game uh, against France in August 2023. Look, it is his fifth year playing with the extra demons. Tom Seeger is a really key player for this side. Um, and, you know, I'm sure it will continue to prove in this game just how key and how important he is to the success of this side. Do you want to know something interesting about Mr. Seeger, actually? I do. So before he started his PGCE, or so he tells me, I don't know how much to believe these people because sometimes I get some very strange stories uh, when I try and talk to the players. <laughs> um, but apparently he spent two years as a full-time chef flipping burgers before starting his PGCE, making a return to the University of Exeter. And he's on that uh, postgraduate studying to be a secondary school geography teacher. Oh, interesting. I know. So Very interesting. Tom Seeger, you rock. Um, and I mean, a... studying geography, he's got a surname that definitely goes with that. Hey. Linking with the sea there. Goodness me, we'll see you on Live at the Apollo very soon, <laughs> won't we? Well, look, Tom Seeger's had a fantastic game so far. It's no surprise that he's been up as a defensive MVP. He's been part of that GB squad already with Jason that we've mentioned who obviously gives the best hugs in all of Baffa. And look, you know, it's going to be a great rest of the game for him in particular because the impact that he's made in that first half of play um, is just going to continue into this second. Yeah, I think that especially um, when we look at his, uh, his, his intelligence, there, his football intelligence to jump on that ball at the end, it just shows that's the reason why he's in the main GB squad. Um, he works alongside that, that DB core um, and he's part of the main men. Um, he'll be a, a real turning point for the Exeter for the extra team, I think if he can continue, um, continue that momentum and really bringing the team up. I think there are also some other, uh, some other players um, on, like within the extra team that, that have been standouts. As you say, um, Paul, uh, Alawase Paul, who has also been a standout. Do you have any fun facts for me about uh, Oluwase Paul? Oluwase because... Paul. No, you're putting me on the spot there. <laughs> Oluwase Paul didn't want to talk to me. There's a lot of these guys that like to keep their cards to their chest, you know, at the end of the day, because they don't want to give a lot away. And especially in American football, when all your plays mm -hmm. are very set as well, I guess sometimes people can be quite nervous about talking to the opposition yeah. or, or talking to people that might feed into other people's ears. But look, a quick word on the number 14 for XD. He's had a fantastic game so far. And what do Nottingham Trent need to do to actually shut him down to keep him out of this game? Because if they allow him to keep running at the rate that he is, he's going to score more points and he's also going to put Exeter back into real contention in this game. Yeah, I think that it's like what I said during during the match while we're watching him. He's got so much speed and he's now actually finally utilising that speed. And NTU, they did. They let up towards the end of that towards the end of that first half. Um, and if they they do have some speedy players, we've seen Ben Harrison coming through and actually managing to break through and sack and. and, and get into the backfield so if they can actually um, capitalize on some of those players to really to really break down the speed that Exeter have now found and um, that would be perfect but I don't think that NTU as much as they did start to dip they're not out of it they were the ones that actually came to this game with them with more momentum in the first half so I think that if they can get back into that mindset of whatever they did 
at, during those first few plays, um, then that would be perfect. They just need to come out starting like that again. The problem is, though, is they will not be starting with the ball. Exeter will be. Well, I'll tell you what I will say, away from the game actually as well, Tash, what a curtain raiser this is proving to be for Bucks Big Wednesday because the American football, they had a lot riding on their shoulders that they were the opening act of these two days of action. But really, they're living up to the expectations, if not surpassing them. Yeah, we're so used to seeing American football on a Sunday, so it's great to actually see it as a midweek event. And here come Nottingham Trent getting us started in the second half. Lovely kick there from Giles, deep downfield. And let's watch what Exeter do on the return. They are going to return it from deep in their own backfield. And better than return it, they might get some decent yards. That was a lovely kick return for the University of Exeter's number 18, Finley Walagora. Yeah, we've seen a couple of returns now um, by, by the Exeter Demons. And actually, their, their returns seem to be putting them in good stead now, um, as we did see, obviously, in the first half, um, a situation where they were actually starting with the ball basically in their end zone, um, which is something that, as a team, you do not want to be doing. Uh, but let's see what NTU can do now on defence. Now they've had a break trying to get back out there. So they were sent out of bounds there on the sideline. And now... Exeter, they've had a change of quarterback. Tom Norden standing in there now, ready to take the snap. Here comes play action. He hands it off to his running back, the big presence that is Carl West. It gets a good couple of yards there for the University of Exeter. So it'll be second and four by the looks of things for the guys in green, the demons in green. Yeah, the demons in green for sure. Um, I think that they can potentially cause NTU to have some demons um, if they continue the momentum that they had at the end of the, the, the second quarter. My apologies, actually second and three for the University of Exeter. So there goes the snap once more. And West again just marches straight through the middle of the Nottingham Trent defence. That's fantastic work from the running back. And we talked about Nottingham needing to shut down key players. They have not done that from the start in the second half here. No, definitely not. I think that um, when you actually look at what Exeter's O-line did there, and they've got some real big names on the O-line. They've got players from GB under 19. They've got players that have played, played in the German Football League. Um, they're really coming up top trumps now for the team. Well, Exeter certainly enjoying the use of the run game here at the beginning of the second half. And Carl West again featuring on the ball. Third year law student Carl West. It's the one thing we said they needed to shut down was that run game. Because right now they don't have the relationship going through the air. And all they have is the run game. So NTU just need to focus on actually getting that shut down. Well, here we go then. Play action once more with the University of Exeter. It's with Paul who's going around and trying to hop over the Trent defenders. That was a lovely diving tackle going in there from Ethan Sassman and eventually contributed to Paul being brought down. But I think he's hurt his hand in the process. Yeah, Sassman did really well there. I get that this is a final and you want to make big plays, but actually it's about protecting yourself at times. Um, and so Sassman did really well there because a lot of defensive players in that moment, they do tend to duck to go down to try and, um, to try and tackle the play out. Play action here, Norden sends it off to West once more. Carl West fending off one tackle, going through the next. And Carl West is brought down after a gain of about three. Yeah, just going back to that hurdle play, um, the reason why Sassman did so well is because actually, instead of reading it as if the player was going to be going down to be able to tackle them, I actually read that, um, that Oluwasi was going to be going high. And that was so helpful. Once again, Carl West there with the carry being brought down by a good 3-4 NTU players. Well, the run game is certainly working for the University of Exeter at the beginning of this second half. It wasn't at first in that first period of play by any stretch of the imagination. No, they've got a lot of momentum going in at the moment and it's working well for them. Here we go then. University of Exeter, Tom Norden standing in to take the snap. Norden doesn't hand it off to West, instead hands it off to another Exeter University. Oluwase Paul, he's going to go straight into the end zone, but there's a flag on the play from one of the line judges. Let's take a listen in and see what's happened. Holding, number 30 offence, 10-yard penalty, still first down. So that's a holding penalty against number 30, Ben McDermott, holding. So a 10-yard penalty for the University of Exeter. Uh, Tash, just explain to everyone watching at home how big a blow that is, considering Oluwase Paul just ran it in. Yeah, if we watch this replay here, you can see exactly where the hold happens, and it's on the it's, it's, it's on the defender that is trying to get towards Oluwase, and that's the reason why that was such a big call, because actually that defender probably would have made it to Oluwase, would have been able to push him out of bounds, um, but that means that now Extra are going to have to go again to try and get the play. Exeter University. 
Norden takes a snap, hands it off to Carl West, and West makes a good few yards. But it's stopped once more. Shown on our screens, a first and 20 there. It's probably down to a first and 15, I would imagine, Tash. Yeah, roughly. Because if you think about, obviously, the snap and how much that then takes off the play as well. Um, Carl West didn't get one of his big runs in like he has been doing this whole game, um, but did get enough there to try and to try and make that gap just a little bit smaller. We're going with second and 11 here, just looking out at the big orange bollards on the side. And let's see what the University of Exeter do now. Norton hands it off. West charging through the middle, driving those legs, the running back. Desperately trying to break free of the tackle, but he is brought down with only a gain of about two. Yeah, it was really good by actually um, number 20 from Trent, Finn Beckett, um, was actually trying to rip the ball out of West Ham because he hadn't hit the ground yet. And that's the key thing. If you haven't hit the ground, the ball can still come out. Keep your eyes peeled on everyone on that pitch. Tom Norden takes the ball, hands it straight away to Carl West, who's trying to get around the outside of that D-line. But a huge hit going in from Nottingham Trent. Roberts Vatschuk, the big number 65, put in a crucial hit actually on West because he was about to hit his second stride and break free of the line there. They've got so much momentum with this run game, the Demons, right now. Um, the problem is, though, is how, much, how long they can keep up for because this is only the third quarter. They've still got another quarter after this. Well, here we go. Exeter University take the snap with Norden, who's looking to hand it off to a running back. And indeed, it does happen. And they're going around the outside and into the end zone. And it's a score for the Exeter University side. The Demons are alive with Ben McDermott. And in this second half, they are the ones that get on the scoreboard first. Yeah, that was a really good play there. Um, they actually managed to do a bit of sleight of hand and really going around trying to um, try, trying to, to fake out where, they, where the ball was going, which put off the NTU defence. If we, if we watch this replay right here, it is, it's that play action where you're trying to put the defence off and there was only one defender there to actually try and get, um, try and get the extra demons down. And unfortunately that could not happen well good work actually from tom norden right at the line itself the line of scrimmage because he held the ball he had the bravery to hold the ball up to keep the ball in hand and wait for the runner to round him on the outside and it paid off for the university of exeter are they going to go for another fake here it looks like they are they're going to go for the two rather than just settling for a single point and they are going to go all the way surely there is a flag on the play there's a flag, and I think there's a change of possession too. I almost thought for a second there that James Bush had marched himself in for another two points, taking his tally to four, but it wasn't the case because Trent managed to get their hands on it. Illegal formation, offense, that penalty is declined. The try is no good. So it was an illegal formation by the offence. The penalty declined by Nottingham Trent, and it means their attempt at two points is no good, says the referee. And Tash, that's a big blow. Yeah, that's, I mean, because now when you look at it, NTU just need to get the touchdown and then the extra points to go in the lead. Um, it almost takes the stress off of NTU a little bit now in terms of like that scoreline. Um, that is the, the risk of going for the two points is it doesn't always pay off and it doesn't always come, come to fruition. And especially if you're trying to make those quick snap changes on the line, if you get that formation wrong and you don't line up correctly, that's what happens to you. Well, it will soon be the turn of Trent themselves to show us what the offence can do in this second half. Definitely a change of intent from the University of Exeter, a change of tactics, and it's resulted in a touchdown, but they missed out on the bonus points to go with it as well. And there you can see confirmation of the scoreboard. Nottingham Trent, 14, University of Exeter, 20 in the first of many games here at Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance. And Bush sends it down the field. And Trent are indeed going to return this. Here come Nottingham Trent. There's a bit of a broken field in front of them now to exploit. They're going down that sideline and finally bundled out of bounds. It's Selassie Soso. He did fantastically well there to give his side a lot of yards. Yeah, that was a really good return by Sosu there. Because when you look at it, there wasn't actually a lot of gaps and there wasn't a lot of space for him to run. But he managed to dodge and go out to the side, even though actually his lead blocker, as you want that secondary turn to be that lead blocker, was going in a different direction. He was able to get that yardage, able to get down the sideline. We talk about going down the sideline and trying to get out outside. 
the big guys won't be there. The big guys are the ones that you don't want to get tackled by. Well, here comes Venegas, the first time that we've seen him in this first well, in this first quarter of the second half. Play action now, Venegas looking downfield, looking for his intended receiver. It's an incompletion, it's not a fumble. Tash's school of American football was teaching us all that in the first half. But that was really close, actually. He almost found Sosu, who had a fantastic return just then. So it's no surprise he was the intended target. Yeah, just a little bit too high there. We've talked about how um, how how Venegas has actually been able to um, hit his targets perfectly in the first half. Um, but that wasn't that perfect pass that you would like to see. It was a bit too high for, for Sosu. Um, so we'll, we'll see what can if those two can actually find that relationship in this uh, third quarter. We're well, second and ten then for Nottingham Trent. Venegas standing over the ball once more. Motion as well on the play. Venegas going lateral downfield. Coca fumbles the ball in the tackle. And the University of Exeter have stolen possession. There wow. is a flag, though. There is a flag on the play. So we'll take a listen in to find out what's happened. After the play was over, personal foul, Exeter. 15-yard penalty from the dead ball, first down. Well, there you go, personal foul from the Exeter player, but it was after the play was over, making that point very clear, the referee. So it is a change of possessions, and Tash, this is another defining moment, actually, of the fixture as a whole. Yeah, that was really interesting. So if you watch this replay here, you almost, you, you needed... You needed Ben Harrison to, to to make that block because it was Ben Harrison's player who who was the the, the person who, um, who whose player was the one that came through and made the tackle on Coker. Um, and I guess if you are going to to run something like a screen play or something where you want that running back to fade out, you do need those blockers in place so that they have that security going upfield. Um, so may, maybe that that should have been. We know that we, we know that uh, Chris Venegas has the has the knowledge to be able to make quick changes and quick and quick decisions. Maybe that wasn't the right decision that it, for that play. Ben Abbott is standing in again at quarterback, coming in to replace Tom Norden. So the two of them switching over. And Abbott hands that off. So his running back is going to take that forward. It's Finley Walagora. And he's finally brought down to the floor by the Trent defence. Lovely little gain for the University of Exeter. The chains are moving. It is a first down. I was waiting for the confirmation task, just staring at those orange bollards. Yeah, I'm finding this really interesting, the switch in momentum, because as we say, um, Exeter Demons had all the momentum coming out of that first, out of the first half, um, whereas NTU started the first half with all the momentum. Um, and now it seems to have switched where Exeter have really capitalised on what they did at the end of that first half, and they're, they're running with it, and literally running with it. Oh, there's their Strictly Come Dancing move again from the University of Exeter. Little pirouette, Darcy Bustle will be proud. But here comes Abbott taking the snap. Play action now with the University of Exeter, and they're looking to run it out wide. But there's no room out there for the Green Demons. No, I think with that sort of play, it, it sounds really bad, but if you're, if you're switching your play to, to move over to the side, it's quite obvious where you're trying to get that either screen or where you're trying to actually get that, um, get take your play. Um, and so as much as that is a lovely a lovely sight to see um you're almost you're almost telling the the defense where you're going to be going um which is something that you don't necessarily want to be doing they still made a good six yards but they would have hoped for a first down instead it's second and four for the university of exeter here's abbott looking for a lateral throw and he is indeed going to get it to the receiver and it is as well going to be a first down for the university of exeter courtesy as casper strock yeah, that was really good there by the University of Exeter. I think that I didn't necessarily... We, we kept talking about like the whole the QB receiver, the receiver's not necessarily having that relationship. Um, but actually, the relationship is now starting to build up a little bit more, even though it's short passes. As long as you have the people that you can rely on to actually run it downfield and get those yards, all that you need is those quick, short passes. Well, here come the University of Exeter. First and ten now. Abbott standing over the ball. Play action. Abbott hands it off straight away, though, and that's a big hit going in. Yeah, that was really well read there by the NTU, uh, by the NTU defense. Um, 
Alex Schulz was going nowhere, was he? No, definitely not. I think that they're, they're really trying to utilise that run, but especially when you can see two in the backfield, it's quite obvious then they're going to try and choose the run in that instance um, because then you've got that lead blocker moment. And so having that, having the NTU defence, being able to read that, being able to get down quickly, um, quickly get onto to the ball carrier, yeah, very helpful. Apologies, I got a little bit distracted there by a dog that tried to get into our booth. <laughs> <laughs> I was just distracted, don't worry. But it's second and 14 now for the University of Exeter. Here go the Green Demons. Abbott now dumping that one off nice and early to Shaw's once more. And he'll get it to within that 10 yard margin that they were given at the beginning of this drive. Yeah, they've they've obviously still got a couple more downs to try and try and get to the end, but at the moment it seems to be the, these really like short kind of I wouldn't necessarily even say effortless. There's not really a whole lot of effort being put into those throws. Just time out for an injured player. So just taking time out quickly for an injured player, the officials. We're trying to identify which player it is that's in need of some attention. But it's a good thing that the officials have spotted it along with the medical staff because, again, player welfare and safety is of paramount importance throughout Baffa and Bucks and all of Britball, really, in Uniball. Uh, Tash, just a quick word actually on the running game from Exeter and how it's impacted them in this second half because you could almost say that, yes, it was advantage Nottingham Trent after the end of that first quarter by a country mile, mm -hmm. but now going into this third quarter and the start of the second half, thanks to that run game starting to work, you could say that the pendulum has swung completely. Oh, yeah, 100%. The pendulum has massively swung. Like They've got all of the momentum. Their run game is working and we're just about to get back on track now with Exeter to see what else they can do. Third and five now, Abbott takes a snap and hands it off to the University of Exeter who are making some really good yards here. It's the kicker, it's the guy who does it all. It's James Bush, receives, scores, kicks, he does it all. Yeah, that little reverse there, um, bringing James Bush across, um, that that was a, a really, a really well well developed play um, and, and you could see that um, that NTU had been completely moved, moved across the pitch. So that's where the opening was. So yeah, really, really well seen by the, by the Exeter Demons offense. Bush, of course, a South All-Star and a member of the Bristol Aztec setup. So it's fair to say that he's definitely had some good nurturing in his career that's got into this point. And there he is towards the sideline edge. Here's some play action now with Abbott Bush on the switch again. And Bush is sending this one downfield, but that was a wayward pass from the 82. Yeah, we, we kind of talked about Exeter's passing in this and it hasn't necessarily had the most power, but that, that for sure, I can see what they were trying to do. It was definitely a Super Bowl-esque um, style play where you, you get your receivers involved and you do that dual, dual QB situation, not necessarily paying off though for Exeter. Sadly, it means he has completely disproved my point. He is a man that can't do everything. <laughs> he can do most things on an American football pitch. But James Bush is still having a fantastic game at the moment for the University of Exeter. There he is on the left side of the line of scrimmage. Another Darcy Bustle pirouette from the line. And here we go. Exeter takes a snap through Abbott and he hands that off to Shaw. Shaw's cutting back infield, making really good yards there. That's the first down that University of Exeter would have been looking for. And let's move those chains. Yeah, really well, really well seen, um, really well seen. But also, it just oh, the, the whole pitch seemed to open up completely. Um, and this is, really, it, I mean, all, all we keep saying is Exeter's run game, Exeter's run game. But that literally is what is getting them through this. It is Exeter's run game. I'm, I'm seeing a, a time a timeout right now, an injury timeout. Injury timeout once again, yes, but let's just keep talking about that extra run game. It's really the thing that's getting them back into this game, and I doubt we'll see James Bush try another <laughs> Hail Mary down the field. Yeah, I don't, I can't, I can't necessarily see a James Bush Hail Mary, but maybe they've got another another run, uh, wide receiver or tight end up their sleeve to, to really um, open up that, 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 that dual QB opportunity. But it is their run game that is taking them through this, and it's quite confusing as to what what the NTU really actually need to do to shut this down because they've tried everything they've they've stacked their defensive they've stacked their defensive lineup so okay well what then what extra have done is okay well, we'll stop diving then we'll stop going down the middle we'll we'll take out Carl West for a little bit and we'll try some other other options they're now doing that reverse play where they're bringing in a wide receiver and bringing them across to basically do that fake to the running back to then to then get a wide receiver onto the side that that has the um, that has the weaker weaker defensive lineup. 
Dash, we're just going to go to a quick 30-second break here, just a, a quick one, and it actually gives me enough time to grab a glass of milk, which, of course, is the best drink to grab. Well, just take a look at the fans that have come to join us here at Loughborough University for Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance. And as you've seen there, it's not just about the support of New Balance, but the support of the British farming industry and how students can milk every single moment. Milk, of course, being one of the most nutritious and most cost-effective drinks for student athletes up and down the country. And if you don't want to listen to me talking about it, a little old commentator, then listen to a former player themselves. Tash Crump, you can testify to the benefits of drinking milk in your diet, surely? Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> I can in a way, yeah, of course. I mean, like, as you say, nutrition is um, nutrition is the top thing that, you, that, especially when you're playing at a high level, like you have to understand. Being here at Loughborough University, literally, I would probably say the home of British University sports, um, always topping the Bucks, uh, the Bucks tables, always, um, always top at their game. Um, they have a great team behind them, making sure that their scholars and their top athletes um, know exactly what they need to do. And we've seen so many players across the university spectrum coming through um, into national squads. We're talking of going to the Olympics, not even just looking at these finals, but actually going to the Olympics, playing at the top level of their game, competing for Great Britain, as we've talked about with some of the players today um, in this Uni Ball Division One final. Um, we're seeing them playing for GB under 19s and yet yeah, nutrition is a massive part of actually keeping you fit and healthy something that I can't necessarily say for myself right now is dealing with an ankle injury maybe I haven't drunk enough milk <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to actually tell me that you're lactose intolerant and I was really hoping you weren't going to throw me under the bus like that but of course uh, milk comes in all its, its, its forms you know you've got your skimmed you've got your semi skimmed um, you know and if you know you've got your full fat if you want to treat yourself I know many of these players actually uh, have spoken about the blue milk very fondly but that's a different story for a completely uh, completely different day we don't want to get into that with Brit ball players all around us otherwise we will never leave Loughborough without talking about it um, we have got a longer period of stoppage time now uh, and rather than milking more content out of you about the great nutrition of the said drink that we were just discussing let's talk a little bit more about how we expect the rest of this game to pan out as you can see extra only marginally ahead on the scoreboard if Trent were to get a touchdown right now and even just get the extra point they do retake the lead of the game however momentum is everything yeah momentum right now is is it's all in like the pendulum has swung completely over to Exeter um, it's Exeter's to I would say it's completely Exeter's to lose at this moment in time NTU you just don't seem to have any momentum they're not really getting the ball going on offense um, the the link ups that we saw in that first half have just disappeared um, and I think that that's actually costing NTU so much right now obviously we saw the really big turnover um, and everything that Exeter are doing um, just seems to be completely over overriding anything that NTU are trying um, I think especially with Chris Chris Venegas like as we as, as you said James you are a number one Chris Venegas like fan I'm in the Chris Venegas fan <laughs> I actually might get him to uh, sign a jersey for me at the end of yeah. this match if he ends up becoming the champion because look I mean for me at the moment he's the front runner for the MVP if Trent were to win it if Exeter were to win it I'd actually have to argue you might disagree with this I'd argue that James Bush is up there to contest for MVP I mean James Bush you've got to say you've got to give Carl West a shout like Carl West was there, was was actually in the first half, especially in the first quarter when X had no momentum. Jay, like Carl West was the one that was actually like trying to give them everything. Um, and I would say as well that like you've kind of got to look at some of NTU's big players as well for for MVP. Um, we're we're talking, obviously. Um, Sorry, I've, I've completely lost my, my names right now. No, no, now. don't worry, Tash. Oh, Paul. Do, you, do you know what? We're going to take a moment here because we are, we've got a much longer period of stoppage than we were anticipating. So it gives us a great opportunity to thank all of our partners that have made Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance, possible in all of its forms here at Loughborough University. You really do your research into the private equity sector. Don't be put off by this kind of mysticism that potentially lies around it. Do your research not only to help with your application and interview process, but also to see if you personally would like to work at that place or that centre or that field. What makes our 
wildly different is how much responsibility they give to each and every one of us in the business and with that comes a lot of trust. Three months into your training you could be uh, running the store on your own, responsible for ordering all the stock, making sure the staff are happy. Aldi really believes that young people can do great things. It's, it's definitely something that excited me and attracted me to the role. I felt really supported at Aldi. From day one you're paired up with your mentor who is with you throughout your whole journey. You develop a really strong network with your peers, you can always pick up the phone to them. But you all work part of a team towards the common goal. I really valued my time in store because I think it's a really important part of you learning the practical day-to-day -day of store operations. It was actually really exciting and I really enjoyed it. It's, it's a change every single day um, and that variety really uh, attracted me to the role. So once again, a huge thank you to all of our partners that have made Bucks Big Wednesday possible and indeed a big shout out to the entire Bucks team who are here today and might be back at Bucks HQ in London for making all of the events that you saw advertised there possible, especially with the Bucks Super Rugby and Women's National League Finals coming up on the 17th of April at the Stonex Stadium. Tickets are available online to purchase if you want to get yourself down to the Stonex for a day you won't forget, then make sure you check that out. But for now... The attention is here at the Loughborough University rugby pitch. But it's not rugby, it's American football action. But if you've missed the first half, if you missed out, then we've got the highlights ready for you to enjoy. Take a look at these. And Tash, once again, just talk me through what you enjoy so much about these. Yeah, this is the first Nottingham Trent touchdown um, where we really got to see um, Coker do his work. And it was that it was that dive play. It was so simple, but he just has so much strength and power going through. And that's what makes a good running back play is the strength and power and being able to rely on a running back to just def defy the odds and push through guys that are 10 times bigger. And then here was that, oh, the Pat Daly-esque oh, from Chris Venegas, just absolutely rolling out holding holding onto that ball right until the last second to fake out the defenders to run into the corner and get that touchdown and then here was Exeter's Exeter's moment of brilliance from Al Alawase Paul um, spinning there to get into the end zone absolutely wonderful that was where the momentum started to swing in Exeter's favours but especially Paul coming through and really really getting that speed getting that run getting those running plays actually into the end zone and then here was that two point where where they managed to managed to quickly switch the play and we saw Bush there running into the end zone for that two points and then this was the the kicker the next time um, where it wasn't just the kicker for NTU but the kicker physically kicked the ball into the back of their own player um, and we saw we, we, we suddenly saw um, yeah, Tom Siegel coming through there with the touchdown. Well, we're coming out into some play action here with the University of Exeter. And Abbott has that one off to Shaw's once more. No yards to be gained there for the University of Exeter. Sorry I had to cut you off there, Tash, because Abbott was not hanging around for me. And uh, we have got confirmation of the Trent player who has been safely escorted off the field on a stretcher. And we wish him all the best. Number 20, Finn Beckett. We wish you a speedy recovery. We, of course, hope it's nothing too serious. And that we'll see you back in a Brit Ball game again soon. But for now, it's second down and goal for the University of Exeter. 
and he hands it off to Shaws once more. He checks back on his inside. Is he over the whitewash? And that's a touchdown. Into the end zone and getting the points for the University of Exeter is Alex Shaws. Well, we do have a flag out there, though, on the play. So we'll just take a listen in to the refereeing, the officiating team, to see what's happened. The result of the play is a touchdown. After the play, dead ball, personal foul number six, Exeter. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the try and the time down. So they do indeed have a touchdown, but it'll be a 15 yard penalty for the act of Alex Schulz after scoring. I think that that's been a real problem for Exeter. Is It's great when you score a touchdown, but why, why the need for per, for the personal fouls at the end of the day you don't need to celebrate or do something to the extent of actually damaging your team's chance of getting that extra point and especially with the fact we know they like to go for the two points you can't necessarily go for the two points when you've had penalties and flags on the play well surely they're going to have to just settle for the one point here even though they're setting up nothing like it in fact they've actually set up like they're going for the two points ben abbott standing in at the line of scrimmage ready to receive the ball there he is hands it off to Schulz. Or as he handed it off to Shaws, it's gone to the other side. Somehow it's ended up in the end zone. I completely lost the ball on the screen, Tash, as did yourself. And Exeter have got two extra points out of nowhere. I think that that's what they needed because after losing that two extra points um, in, the, in the last touchdown, they needed to make sure they got those extra points somewhere. So I guess that's why they went for two points. But yeah, look, completely lost the ball. Where did it even go? Fooled the camera crew, fooled us here in commentary and fooled everyone watching at home probably. The University of Exeter have marched themselves into a 28-14 lead over Nottingham Trent. And now that is a statement. I would say let's get a replay, but I don't think any of us actually know, know where the ball was, so we wouldn't even be able to call it on a replay at that moment. Um, but definitely a statement play there by the University of Exeter, really coming up tops. And let's look at this here. So they it's managed to get it out to James Bush from the looks of it, and he, he did actually, he did show that he can QB. Well, I take it back. James Bush <laughs> really can do it He all. can do everything. Wow, for anyone that was talking to me earlier saying, yeah, James Bush can't do it all, he flipping well can. Just look at that as a prime example. I think they were just trying to show us and make a point. Well, Nottingham Trent are trying to take this forward on the return here with Sosu. He's still alive with Sosu. He might go through a gap in the middle here just as he jumped to go through the middle. Brought down by two extra players. That was really nice by Sosu there. Like massively managed to get out of uh, out of a tricky situation by spinning, diving, doing whatever he needed to do to move around. But we are now going to be taking um, another injury uh, time out and the referees are going to be pulling the players away to get so, the player. So Sue is down at the moment. He took a really big hit there from two University of Exeter defenders. So it's no surprise that he's he needs some time. But he is up. He's marching straight back into the line of scrimmage. Tashi heard you and he was like, no, nope, I've got work to do. I've got things that need to be done, there's a championship to be won. He has definitely got work to do. I think that he is going to be taking um, a bit of time out on the sideline just to probably get his breath back because that was a big hit and he did go down quite heavily. Um, so hopefully we can see him back out on the field in, um, in no time. Well, here we go. First and 10 for Nottingham Trent University. Venegas standing, ready to take the ball from the line. It's snapped to Venegas, looking downfield. And he has found an open target. Great play from Joe White to get himself into a bit of space. That's a lovely little game there for Nottingham Trent. Yeah, it's really great to see Venegas as well, um, utilising his knowledge, but also getting back to hitting those passes right on target, getting that ball directly into Joe White's hand, who had plenty of space to turn upfield. Bit of an eight-yard gain there for Nottingham Trent University. So it's uh, second and two for the boys in pink. And Venegas ready to take the snap. Play action now. Here we go. Hands it off to Coca. Coca trying to go straight through the middle of the D-line. Is it enough for the first down? It is. The chains are moving, Tash. Yeah, that's exactly what you want. You want those quick plays by the receivers that can get you a good amount of yardage so that then your running backs only need to get a couple of yards to push for that first down. Here we go then. First and ten for Nottingham Trent University. Chris Venegas standing ready. 
Play action now, Venegas sends that one downfield once again taken nicely by Joe White. And I think it's fair to say that they'll be looking to the talisman for the rest of this game. Yeah, Joe White now seems to be the go-to player. I think that they've obviously seen something on this on, on this right side that um, that Joe White can give them that maybe other players that are on the left cannot. Um, but obviously it does help with the fact that Joe White is an absolute tower of a man um, and also has strength behind him to, to, to push forward and to hopefully get past those DBs. So second and three now for Nottingham Trent. Venegas hands that one off to Coker. Coker going through the middle and he's definitely got the first down and he's got more there for Nottingham Trent. Still up is Coker and finally brought down by the extra defence. What a run. Yeah, what a run there by Coker. That was absolutely incredible. It was the way that he kept pumping and then kept taking down the extra defenders. You can see they're trying to move quickly now because they're all getting back into the huddle. So they really want to go quick play offense, which shows what Venegas can do. But just look at this replay right now. Spinning out, taking down two men, taking down a third, and then finally getting that forward momentum being taken to ground. Here we go then. First and ten for Nottingham Trent. Venegas looking downfield, blocked up in the air, but the ball falls to the floor before it's intercepted. So it's just an incompletion. So it'd be second and ten for Nottingham Trent. Yeah, that was that was a bit of a moment there for, for NTU because we've already seen them have a couple of misdemeanors um, and the ball get turned over. And that was extremely close um, after the tip to being picked off by the extra demons, which would have once again put the momentum in their favor. Um, and they are currently 14 points up and we need NTU need to get a touchdown on this drive. Well, here we go then, second and ten for Nottingham Trent. And Aid Coker's trying to go up through the middle again to get those yards. And he's done well to get a gain of about five there for Nottingham Trent. Yeah, once again, Coker coming through there, bringing back the momentum, getting his four or five yards that's needed. Um, and really, really showing his strength after a very a very long, very heavy run of getting dragged down to then being able to produce something like that, especially after the momentum kind of not necessarily going the way they wanted to on that following play. Well, look, Coker's already tasted what silverware's like on the big day. He's a, a national school's final champion in the game of rugby, the other oval ball. But now we're focusing on the American one. Third and six now for Nottingham Trent, but a call from the referees, flags being thrown. Let's take a listen in to our officials. This is the end of the third quarter. That's the end of the third quarter. So we still have 20-odd seconds left on our clock, but of course the clock that matters is the one on the referee's wrist. Yeah, that's really interesting because obviously NTU were just about to snap the ball there, were just about to make a play, and that can actually really play in the minds of the players of actually we were just about to go. Are they now going to go to the sideline, change the play? Are they potentially going to look at doing something different than what they had just planned? Because now everybody gets an opportunity to fully reset. And let's talk about the fact that, you know, Nottingham Trent have lost a player. They are they are down a man. And we obviously have sent Finn Beckett our, our best wishes. But that will really inspire a team and spur them on and really fuel the fire in their bellies as well. So it's no surprise that Trent have come charging out the blocks in offence. Yeah, definitely. You you have that mindset of the moment if that somebody goes down injured, you want to go and win the game for them because of the fact that they're now going to be going and getting treatment. They can't experience this anymore. So what you need to do is now channel what they would have done on the field and have them almost like you look at how many players you have on the field they're, they're your they're your extra they're your extra member they're your extra momentum to actually go out and and win well Trent is just having a little huddle there deciding what the play is going to be Tash you said about how you would probably change it up it looks as though that is taking place yeah, especially if the moment you change sides, like X to have a, have the opportunity here to to also like look and reevaluate. So if you've just seen a, a team come out in a formation, they've almost obviously assessed that already. Now they need to come out differently and something that can actually. And it depends as well what way the wind is blowing. Because if the wind's blowing in a different direction, the other side that will then change your play as well. Here we go then, third and five for Nottingham Trent. Benegas giving some new orders to his linemen and to his running backs. Bit of movement there at the line of scrimmage for Nottingham Trent and now Venegas looking downfield. 
moving himself out of the pocket into a bit more space. Venegas might take it forward himself. That's a huge tackle on Chris Venegas from David Oyada. Yeah, that's a massive tackle because as a QB, as a QB, you only take the ball if you know you have security to be able to either slide or get out of bounds without being tackled. You do not want to be tackled as a, Q, as, as a QB in that moment, but especially not by one of the big guys. And Venegas went to go have a word at the sideline there. He didn't look happy after that play, and I don't think I would have been happy either after getting a huge hit like that. No, I've got a huge hit like that before, and I haven't been happy. <laughs> well, here we go. Nottingham Trent lining up. It's fourth and three. They've got to throw everything at this. They have to convert this into a first down. Otherwise, it's a big loss of possession. Venegas, his throw is blocked. It's an incompletion, thanks to the work of Owen Beaumont. And now the University of Exeter will be in possession. Yeah, it really shows what height can do because if you can read that play perfectly, exactly how Owen Beaumont did right there, he, like, I just saw him running next to some of the guys, and we know that American footballers are tall. He was towering over some of them. So that just shows that arm span, that height can really come into play, especially if you've got a QB that, that doesn't necessarily loft it at all times that can throw that flat ball, and that's exactly what happened there in that moment. Well, here we go then. First and 10 for the University of Exeter. They are 28-14 up currently here at Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance. And we're in the final quarter too. They hand it off to West. West goes right through the middle of the Nottingham Trent defence. And he almost walks all the way to the halfway line. But he is finally brought down. That's a huge gain for Exeter. Yeah, and I think that Carl West has come back into play. We haven't seen him for a while, especially not in this second half yet. Um, and he's just he need. I feel like that he needed that break after doing a lot of running to begin with in the first uh, in the first part of the third quarter. Now we're seeing him come back and do exactly what he did in that first part of that first quarter, um, and just running straight through the NTU defense. There is nothing they can seem to do to stop him and to stop this momentum. Um, but also there was a little bit of um, tension between some of the extra players and NTU players towards the end there. So. We'll see how that, that plays out as well. First and ten is with Abbott, who's looking downfield. He was under pressure. Interception by Nottingham Trent. Are they going to run it back into exit territory? Brought down just inside what would have been the beginning of their ten-yard play. Sam Wincott Johnson with the interception for Nottingham Trent. That has completely changed this final quarter. Yeah, that is such a good read there by NTU. Oh my goodness. That's exactly what they needed. We've talked about the Exeter passing plays here and they haven't necessarily been working. Yes, they worked for I think one or two plays, but they weren't necessarily over the top in the middle. If you watch this, watch this replay right now. Exeter getting set up, NTU getting set up. And it was, as the ball was snapped, it's this play right over the middle where, where the QB was getting pressured and it was right into where, where, you're, where the linebackers were standing. Absolutely incredible. Well, here we go then. First and ten now for Nottingham Trent. Chris Venegas waiting to get the snap. Play action now with Venegas looking downfield. He's got to move out of the pocket. He's fumbled the ball. It's loose. Exeter can claim it. They've taken possession back straight away. And after the amazing work of the Trent defense, the offense have ruined the party. Yeah, they've done exactly, they've literally just like done exactly what NTU have just done to them. They pressured the QB to make a mistake, the QB made a mistake, and I don't think I could have said that we would have seen Venegas fumbling in this, in, in this final at all. Very smart QB, understands about ball control, and if we watch this here, we look, drop back, it's exactly what happened to... It's exactly what happened to the NTU QB, getting pressured, instant tackle, done. The difference between what happened to Venegas and what happened to the extra quarterback is that the extra quarterback managed to get the ball off. So Tom Seeger getting the sack there with Josh Lane and forcing the fumble, and so it is Exeter with possession. First and ten, Abbott hands that off once again to Carl West, and West marches his way through the middle, and he's still going strong, Carl West. There is a flag out on the play, though, Tash. Is another party being ruined? Um, potentially, that flag came out quite Offside, early, so it's definitely something defense, that happened. That penalty declined. The play results in a first down. So the penalty declined offside from well, number from 57 on the defence. And we are having another timeout for an injured player. Uh, Tash, sorry to interrupt no, you. No, don't you worry. Keep going. <laughs> no, it was, it was quite early on, so I knew that it must have been either an offside or... or um, uh, 
or a false start by by one of the teams. And as we say, we're, we're taking an, another injury timeout right now. Um, but I guess I, I guess this this is really it's it's quite an interesting one now because there's lots of flags. Um, the momentum is is swinging in Exeter's way, but then swings back to NTU for a little bit. But then NTU can't really seem to keep hold of it. Um, yeah, I, I'm I don't I want to say that that. NTU are coming back, but I don't. I just don't think they are right now, and they only have nine minutes to do. Well, just under ten, just under ten minutes to do it in. Well, and Carl Walkinshaw's gone onto the the pitch, the defensive coordinator, to make sure the Trent player that's down is all right. But it looks like we're going to have another longer period of stoppage here at Loughborough University. And if you just take a look at the bottom of your screen, you can see the score there. University of Exeter 28, Nottingham Trent University 14. It is advantage green demons, but the pink renegades are still within fighting distance. They're still within reach of this game. And anything can happen in the beautiful world of Britball and indeed uni ball as well. Yep, two touchdowns is all it takes right now to get them back level. That's all that they need. And this game is going to then overtime. Well, seeing as we've got another little bit of stoppage, let's hear from another one of our amazing partners that makes events like this possible throughout the university sporting year. Really do your research into the private equity sector. Don't be put off by this kind of mysticism that potentially lies around it. Do your research not only to help with your application and interview process, but also to see if you personally would like to work at that place or that sector or that field. What makes Aldi different is how much responsibility they give to each and every one of us in the business and with that comes a lot of trust. Three months into your training you could be uh, running the store on your own, responsible for ordering all the stock, making sure the staff are happy. Aldi really believes that young people can do great things. It's, it's definitely something that excited me and attracted me to the role. I felt really supported at Aldi. From day one you're paired up with your mentor who is with you throughout your whole journey. You develop a really strong network with your peers, you can always pick up the phone to them. But you all work part of a team towards the common goal. I really valued my time in store because I think it's a really important part of you learning the practical day-to-day -day of the store operations. It was actually really exciting and I really enjoyed it. It's, it's a change every single day um, and that variety really uh, attracted me to the role. Well, we are back in action now at Loughborough University. It was great to hear from our partners and their messages. And we send our best wishes as well to Oscar Bozek. And after that period of time that he was down on the floor, he's able to make his way off the pitch unassisted. So hopefully that means it's nothing too serious. And we do, again, send him all our best wishes and hope that he is OK. And for now, the ball is with the University of Exeter. It's currently going to be a second and five. There was a long pause there with the uh, Exeter line. Let's see what happens here. So, second and five. Ball snaps to Abbott, who sends that on to Carl West, trying to round the Trent defenders. Cuts in on a hard line, but he's met fiercely by the Trent defence. 
And he's just shy of the first down by a yard, I would say, Tash. Yeah, Joe Parton there with the tackle. Um, really, really good. And we talk about, like, perfect tackles in that moment. Carl West is an absolute tank, and you do not want to be trying to tackle Carl West. But Joe Parton did not hesitate there to ensure that they did not make any more, any more gains. Another delay there from the extra line who was set up. Just taking their time to sort out what their play is going to be. Here we go, third and two now. Abbott standing in. That quarterback to receive a bit of a lateral movement there as well. And it almost worked into being something special there, but no gains really for Carl West to get that first down and a bit of a kerfuffle further downfield, Tash. Yeah, I think that with Exeter right now, there's been so many stops that they had so much momentum. It almost like does slow that down. And I think that some of the kerfuffles that, as you say, that we're seeing, it's been happening throughout this, um, this fourth quarter. Um, and really, that's not what you want to see in a final. You want to see everyone playing fairly, but also um, respecting each other. Fourth and two now for the University of Exeter. Again, having a long conversation with their sideline about what they want to do. And we see Ben Abbott ready to take the ball. Here we go. Four and two for the University of Exeter. Play action now. Abbott hands it straight off to Carl West. West has surely got to get the first down and a little bit more as he's bundled out of bounds. Yeah, they really stopped. Um, so we, we saw we, we saw Joe Parton make the tackle on Carl West last time, and they actually managed to block off Joe Parton from being able to get through as they see. They obviously can see him as a threat. Um, so that gave Carl West the opportunity to go out to the sideline, run it down, and as you say, get the first down and then some. So it will be first and ten for the University of Exeter, creeping ever closer to the Nottingham Trent end zone and looking for another touchdown in this game to extend their lead. And you could say, Tash, if they were to score now, hypothetically, does that take the game out of reach? I do think it does. I... Here we go. So Abbott looking downfield, looking for Joe Bush in the end zone. What a play from the University of Exeter's Ben Abbott. Looks downfield and Joe Bush was in a land of his own. Not a Trent player in sight. And well, Tash, does that answer my question? Is the game now out of reach? Yeah, it really does. Uh, um, there's, there is a, a, we are going to take an injury um, timeout as well right now as there is a player down. But we'll just look at this replay. Um, yeah, just looking and there are no players at all around, around Bush. He is completely free on his own right into that back corner and getting that touchdown that he so, so massively deserves. James Bush has got to be the front runner for MVP now, Tash. I know, I know it's not my job. I know it's supposed to be your job. And I'm just getting ahead of myself because there's still seven minutes left to play on our clock. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to try and um, I'm not, I'm not going to try and give anything away. But he has been a massive standout player for Exeter and um, a real, real drive in the momentum. We did see him getting um, a little bit uh, frustrated earlier. Um, getting a bit frustrated earlier with, um, with with the fact that they weren't able to get anything through the air. But now that that is finally working, not only getting him touchdowns through the air, but him throwing touchdowns through the air. Well, the third year international relations student is ready to take some extra points here for the University of Exeter. Again, we've got a bit of a delay due to another injured player, unfortunately, for the Nottingham Trent University contingent. And again, we're hoping it's, it's nothing too serious because the last thing that we want to see, Tash, is when players start to drop to the floor. And it looks as though it's number 15, Luca Bindi. I mean, we've not said his name a lot in this game, but sometimes it's the unsung heroes that we don't shout about that are the most effective. Yeah, I think that um, I think that with with, uh, with Luca, like we haven't seen the um, airplay go well, and that's because the the DBs of Nottingham Trent have basically been stopping um, the uh, Exeter Demons from actually being able to get anything through the air. Um, and as we saw, um, James Bush was completely free in the in the end zone, and unfortunately, um, unfortunately, uh, that was the first time we've actually seen that, isn't it? We've just got a bit of concern here for the for the player who's down at the moment. Luca Bindi, again, we're hoping it's nothing too serious. I keep saying it because I really do mean it, Tash. It's not nice to see these guys go down, but it's great to know that we have got fantastic medical staff all around us here 
on the rugby pitch ready to spring into action and indeed the support of both sides as well because we've seen uh, those from the Exeter camp jump in to help out Trent players who have gone down injured and actually that kind of highlights the camaraderie and respect that's shown throughout not just Uniball but all of Britball. Yeah, I mean, you see it at all levels of British American football. The great thing is now is you have so many people that don't necessarily want to play but want to get involved with teams, including great medical staff. Um, and we're seeing teams actually growing and being able to either recruit or or bring medical staff on on placements um, and aspiring to get to that next level. Um, and it, it's, it's so nice to see all medical staff from both sides always coming to the aid of players to make sure that player safety is the utmost priority um, for everyone. A uh, special mention as well to Joe Parton, the Trent number four, who stayed with the injured player the entire time. He is a standout really for that Nottingham side and, and clearly one of the senior figures in that side. Yeah, definitely. And he's really shown like how much of a, uh, I guess, a standout player that he is, um, ensuring that players are supported, but ensuring that he's able to do his job for the team. Um, and we've constantly been seeing big tackles coming from him, but also like players needing to block him out to to enable players to develop how they need to develop, because else he will be on on the extra demon players, whoever has the ball. Well, I guess also a special shout out and mention to our in stadium entertainment team who. I've got the music going, they've got the announcements going, they're still trying to keep the energy high because the energy has been high all throughout this game from either side. So big shout out to them pumping out the tunes. I don't know if they take requests, but I'd love to see some Coldplay uh, being blurred out. Don't laugh too hard, Tash. They're great. I know they're the mayonnaise of the music world, but you can't hit on me that hard. But uh, enough of my taste in music and indeed the Hellman's. Um, but let's have a talk about how the rest of this game might pan out. Seven minutes on the clock. At the moment, Trent are down by 20 points. We're yet to see whether it'll be 22 or 21 points. Um, how do you dig yourself out of this hole that the Trent players might be finding themselves falling down? I think the biggest problem is right now is Trent are getting hit, 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 getting hit hard the most in terms of those injuries. Um, and the moment that you lose some of those starting players, you do then have to start going down to your second and your third string players. Everyone is prepared and ready for this moment, but there's a reason why you have first string players because they are your standouts. They are the people that are going to be um, making plays. Um, and I think that that's what Trent need to do is rely on those second and third strings to really actually like be those shining stars and, and come up, come up tops for them. Well, Bindi is up and again walking off the field on his own, unassisted. So hopefully that means it's nothing too serious. He'll stay with the medical staff who will assess him to see if any further evaluation is needed. But we send him all of our best from all of us here in the broadcasting team. And now we turn our attention back onto the field because Joe Bush is standing with the rest of his team after scoring a touchdown. Whether they go for two or one, Tash, we're yet to see. Do you think it's going to be two? I mean, they love a good last-minute formation change, so we won't know if they're going for two until they do that formation change. But right now, it looks like they are going to be going for the extra point. But who knows what they could do? They love a last-minute change. I don't know. I'm looking at Joe Bush, and I'm, I am getting a little bit worried. I'm like, are you going to stay there, Joe? Are you <laughs> going to try and fool us again? Well, let's find out. Here we go. Time for the extra points. And, and they're fooling us again. They are going to go for the two. And Joe Bush didn't even need to do anything. They're going for a, a QB sneak style of play, and it has worked out in the extra two points for the University of Exeter. So they charge 22 points into the lead. And with seven minutes left on the clock, you feel like that might have wrapped up the championship game. Yeah, definitely. The momentum is in their favour. We saw James Bush there at the end. Like We've been seeing him so involved in every single play that like, Exeter have done. He, all he had to do in that one was just stand there with his arms raised, celebrating the fact that they had scored the two points. <laughs> well, he's the man that's done everything in this game. His side have done everything that they needed to in this game. Also, after what was a very rocky start, they've really pulled it back. And unfortunately, we've got another Nottingham Trent player down receiving some medical attention. Um, so we will experience another slightly longer stoppage than anticipated here before the restart. Uh, Tash, let's talk about those MVP nominations that might be swirling through your head. I know I've influenced you quite heavily, but uh, don't let me influence you too much because at the end of the day, it is still your decision. Um, but Joe Bush uh, has to be the front runner. Yeah, James Bush is definitely somebody that has stood out this whole, this whole game. But I also want to talk about the fact that... Um, that when we look at as much we haven't said his name recently but um Oloase Paul 
was a massive standout and actually was the reason why the momentum was was flicking in Exeter's favour at, at certain moments. Really getting that speed up the sideline and actually getting that first score is what put Exeter in that in that place to to I guess win this championship. I think um, it's not over, so I can't say win this championship just too soon. But it all it is all Exeter's to lose now. Um, I can't imagine. I mean, we might see it, but I can't imagine we'll see a uh, Super Bowl replay where the Patriots, when they after that time when they came back from being about 30 points down. Um, but you never know. These things can happen, and we have seen massive swings and changes in this game, so that is all to play for. Um, also, another name on the list is Carl West. Carl West has been a standout. Um, and we do have to give it to like Ben Abbott as well. Like the the main quarterback that has been getting those touchdowns in this in this second half. He has obviously like the quarterbacks are typically the people that will actually be the ones making those decisions, making the plays work. But at the same time, Ben Abbott wouldn't have been able to, I think, get the ball off and get as many yards as what has happened if he didn't have that running back call that he's been that he's been handing the ball off to this whole time well we saw Tom Norden the other quarterback introduced towards the beginning of the third quarter the beginning of that second half that we've that we've had and you almost think that actually Ben Abbott came out better from having a little bit of a rest probably talking to his OC talking to his fellow teammates about what's working and what isn't and then when he's put it put back into the game from there it, it really paid off yeah, I think that when you look at the fact that they have two really strong QBs they can rely on in um, in Tom Norden and in Ben Abbott, that is really it is it's something that's really great and something that I guess um, has been playing in Exeter's favour. Um, because if you do have two people, you almost you you can and switch people out. You can give QBs a break, and sometimes QBs are that um, are that mental and physical being within a game. The QBs are the people that have to make the make the decisions as to what they want to do. Because especially if you have a play that you can do multiple options for that QB is the one that is making that decision so you are mentally and physically exhausted by the end of the game having two really strong QBs that's a great option to have a huge shout out to the crowd that you can see on the screen there that has stayed with us the entirety of this game and are still out there even as the sun begins to set here in Loughborough and the lights begin to switch on around this rugby pitch it's fantastic they've all come to join us in the great north And I know that will ruffle a few feathers, but that's exactly why I'm here, Tash. But for now, obviously, we've got a long delay. This takes away all the momentum that Exeter might have built up. Built up. Uh, obviously, we need to respect the fact that it is an injury, and that's why we have got this stoppage, and all care needs to be taken. But from an Exeter point of view, it's bad because you've lost your momentum and attack. But from a Nottingham point of view, it's yet another player that's gone down, and it's almost counteracting the fact that you want to do those players that are no longer in it. Uh, justice by winning the game for them it just deflates you even more doesn't it when more and more people start to get injured yeah and I think it gets to a point in the season where we we, we say about um, how long a season how long an American football season is and actually um, American football season length and some of these players they won't have just been playing uni ball they will have been playing Brit ball and they will actually be moving into the Brit ball season like moving after this um, and so I think that it does end up being a massive cycle so you do have to keep your body in check and unfortunately injuries are really easy easy to, to to come by um so it, but it does it takes momentum momentum away from both teams actually because it takes momentum away from the team that have had the injury against them but it also takes momentum away from the team that are waiting because they're the ones that obviously had been pushing forward especially with Exeter well, it's also great to, to see actually today to talk about something a bit more like we've got fans of all of all ages here with us today you know we've got kids running around getting really involved along the sidelines running with all the players on every play some as young i think is like two or three years old and then we've got grandparents and great grandparents that have turned out in their masses to cheer everyone on today because after all today is a really special occasion with the fact that it might be many people's final level brit ball or brit ball or uni ball game obviously going into being graduates from the university program and moving on to the next stages in their career yeah, it's really great when families can come out and support because I, I know from when I graduated university and your your uni ball team are, are normally in the UK, your first um, your first experience with American football. And so you do end up becoming a family. They do end up becoming like like the people that you want to, like your brothers. So I think that that would be a really key thing for these, these players right now, being able to celebrate with their brothers together. Well, and speaking of brothers, we'll speak about partners. And there's a lot of partners that we need to thank uh, that have played a huge part in making this event possible. And indeed, lots of other Bucks sporting events from throughout the year. So let's say thanks to them now.
mentor, especially so early on in our careers, is that you have an outside perspective and like a go-to person that you can go and ask any questions regarding a situation or your career path. Having a mentor at ICG has really helped me by giving me a perspective of the company as well as my own personal improvement from a outsider's perspective. So I'm able to see and get different feedback of my own progress from someone outside of my team. Aldi different is how much responsibility they give to each and every one of us in the business and with that comes a lot of trust. Three months into your training you could be uh, running the store on your own responsible for ordering all the stock making sure the staff are happy. Aldi really believes that young people can do great things. It's, it's definitely something that excited me and attracted me to the role. I felt really supported at Aldi. From day one you're paired up with your mentor who is with you throughout your whole journey. You develop a really strong network with your peers, you can always pick up the phone to them. But you all work part of a team towards the common goal. I really valued my time in store because I think it's a really important part of you learning the practical day-to-day -day of the store operation. It was actually really exciting and I really enjoyed it. It's, it's a change every single day um, and that variety really uh, attracted me to the role. Well, there you go. A big thank you to all of our partners that make all our Bucks sporting events possible. And indeed, Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance here at Loughborough University. And keep your eyes out online, of course, and on Bucks Super Rugby socials, because tickets to the final on the 17th of April at the Stonex Stadium in North London are on sale. It's an event you do not want to miss. The final last year between Exeter and Loughborough was outstanding. It went to extra time, of course, and I think Dave Rogers will speak for himself when he says in the commentary just how amazing it was to witness that at the stone next stadium so again this is a final that you don't want to miss so go online go visit buck super rugby social media pages and indeed go to the bucks website to find out ticketing information on the buck super rugby and women's national league finals they're both taking place on the same day a double header of rugby why wouldn't you want to go and check that out just as we approach the postseason of those amazing tournaments but for now our focus is on the american football finals and currently tash exeter 34 36 14 up against nottingham trent university we have seven minutes left on the clock we've got a little bit more stoppage time left uh, because we have a player down on the pitch right now who's being tended to um, but how do Trent get themselves back into a competitive position? Because you'd almost say that they have to do every snap as quickly as humanly possible. Yeah, they've got so much experience on, on their team. And I think it's really utilising those experienced players to actually step up and motivate the team right now. Because that's the key thing is the motivation. Well, let's just take a look at those on our screen right now. I mean, you can see Adrian Giles, the head coach of Nottingham Trent University, um, supported, of course, by a fantastic coaching staff in Scott Messam, Carl Walkinshaw, Stuart Burgess Lowe, Vanden Warner. I mean, it's a great team to have to support these young players in their development in the Brit Ball game. Yeah, it's it, as much as it is down to the players to, to help motivate each other on the pitch because you do want to be there for each other. It is also down to the coaches. They need to make the right play calls and, un, and fully understand what they need to do to to uh, to motivate and spur the players on. Um, in, in these last seven minutes as we know anything can happen I mentioned earlier about the Patriots when they went on to win the Super Bowl after being down by I think it was 28 points um, and so I think that right now currently NTU need to somehow do a Patriots and come come from behind 
You're a Patriots fan by any chance, are you, Tash? You no, keep bringing I, that one up. I hate the Patriots, actually. I'm a Giants fan. <laughs> a Giants fan? Well, that's yeah. even worse. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I know. We've lost Saquon. We're done. <laughs> oh, you can't come near me and my Steelers. It's it's rust time. It was, It's not Pickettsburg anymore. It's, uh, it's, it's time for Russ to see what he can do. But enough about other American football leagues. Our focus is on this one. And actually, I'm going to take a quick moment to thank our officiating team from today. The referee, Ben Griffiths, the umpire, Kieran Smith, the headlinesman, Roger Goodgroves, the line judge, Henry Young, the back Back judge Paul Todd, the field judge Amir Brooks, the side judge Ewan Patterson and the centre judge David Parsons because of course Tash, without any of them giving up their time for this game um, you know, we, we wouldn't have a match to enjoy. Yeah, Baffa is such, a, such an integral part of um, of the American football setup, and I think that the time that all of these referees do put in to make sure that the game is as fair and as and, and well contested, um, that is it's just a testament to them because this has been a really good game, and the, I, I feel that the right calls have been made. They've been it, they've been extremely integral in, especially um, some of the big flags that have happened. But they have been the right the right thing. It's been the right thing to do, and that's exactly what Baffa's job is: is to ensure the right the right calls are made and that they are actually ensuring that the game is fair, but also looking out for player safety. Player safety, of course, paramount importance across many sports at university level, competing under the Bucks name and organisation. Uh, that's not a sight that you want to see coming onto the pitch. A stretcher is coming out to help the injured Nottingham Trent player who's currently down on the floor. It's great that we have access to the paramedics so quickly to be able to help players if they are in an injured position and do need some assistance and further examinations. Um, Tash, I'm not, Tash, I'm not going to dwell on that a bit too much because, again, there is seven minutes left of this fixture that we're going to play out. Nottingham Trent are trailing. You've told me what they need to do to get back into this match in a competitive position. But let's talk a little bit about Exeter and the fact that they are so far ahead, the Demons. You know, they've really hit their stride in really this second period of the game altogether. You know, the second quarter, they were sort of coming back into it and they really were, were gifted an entry back into the game after a, a missed kick by Nottingham Trent. But now in this second half, they've just hit their stride. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked a bit at half time about what the coaches would be saying to each team. And actually, I believe that the Exeter had that that better team talk in all honesty because Nottingham Trent came out and we saw even their most experienced players making mistakes whereas Exeter haven't made those mistakes instead they've actually capitalized on Nottingham's mistakes and that's what has been so pivotal in this Exeter have taken every opportunity that has been thrown at them and really run with it and as we've, we've talked about their run game so many times that's literally been the key part of their whole setup is that run game and being able to ensure that their run game has worked. They've been switching it out. They haven't been using exactly the same players every single time. They switched it out. They switched it up. Um, and I think that, that that has been what is what has worked. Whereas I think NTU have relied heavily on key and certain players to actually pull them through this match. And that won't work if they would like to bring it back in this last seven minutes. And now, Tash, talk to me a little bit about anyone that might be watching this match and actually think, hey, you know what? I fancy giving American football a go. What, what should they do? Where should they go? What should they look up? Um, and should they possibly also look at flag football? Yes. Um, so this is a really good opportunity, basically. If you're at university, talk to your university team. University teams are actually mixed. So if you are a female looking to get into the sport, you don't have to go and straight, in, straight in and join a women's team. You can do like what I did, go and join your university team. So talk to your university sports department. See if there's an opportunity where if you are a continuing student, you can then go to the rookie sessions, join up. So university students, talk to your university teams. University um, universities are now offering more and more flag opportunities too. So if you don't want to do the contact that you want to get into flag, talk to your university. There is always opportunities to create new teams. Well, because it's, it's quite a complicated game at the end of the day, American Football Tash. And actually, if you, if you play the flag variation as well, um, you might end up, you know, sort of learning the ropes of the game um, rather than just throwing yourself in the deep end, really, mm -hmm. um, yes. of, of proceedings. And I'm just, I'm just going to take a quick moment here because we've got um, a, lovely, a lovely technician joining us because we're going to get GB head coach Jason Scott with us, royalty really of the British American football scene. You're starting to blush now, Jason. This yeah, is I'll um... bow and curtsy nicely. How are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, yes, Your Majesty, your, yes. your sire. Um, how are you feeling watching this game? I think there's a lot of people that have really put their hands up to maybe be considered for your, your GB squad and GB running. Yeah, there's already guys I'm aware of. I think there's some, some talented players on both sides. I really like the offensive line of Exeter. I think they're really well drilled and got some size. And 
Uh, that's a big thing. Trent, I've obviously been well aware of all season, living across the city from them, coaching across the city from them. They've got some real talent. And I think it bodes well for the future of British American football, if not this year, then years to come, because a rising tide lifts all ships. And what they're doing here is by showcasing the best of Division One football, these guys are going to be in the Prem next year. And with the onset of the National League, it just shows that the vision that books have got, that, that Tonya's got for American football in the UK, that it, the sport is here to stay and it's not a, a minority sport anymore. Uh, so, yeah, lots of talent um, on, on the sidelines, on the field, on the coaching staffs. It's been a really exciting day and more to come. When it's just growing year on year, exponentially, really. And I mean, it sort of works as a trickle down effect from the very top, doesn't it? More people are getting involved in the adult game right at the top of the British American football scene. And I guess that trickles down with family members and friends sort of seeing what happens. And then people take it up at university level here. Yeah, it's not being that curiosity of it. I think, I think what I used to see from my years previously coaching American football at Freshers' Fair, people didn't really know, didn't really know about American football. They'd have seen it on TV or maybe played a bit Madden. Um, but now they're aware of the, the sport, they're informed about the sport, they're educated. And that's come from all angles, whether it's the work that Bafra are doing with the outreach programs, the flag, the under-16s, uh, or, or the NFL. Um, people are informed about it. We had 139 registered players this year at the University of Nottingham. So it shows that there is an interest and there is an appetite for American football and you know as long as we keep pushing it and, and keep driving it and it's going to go from success to success which is obviously going to benefit me at the national program level where we're getting young I think the average age of the 100 man squad at the moment is is 25 and three months so it's getting younger and younger which is awesome to see so yeah and it, it's, it's it's like this it's, it's awesome to see and at the end of the day, do you want to keep them here in the UK or do you want to see them blossom and maybe go out into the European Football League, the Canadian Football League, and then ultimately maybe they could achieve NFL contracts one day? I, my job as a coach is to put players in a position to succeed. Now, whatever success looks like for them, whether it's playing on Bucks Big Wednesday, Bucks Big Tuesday, whether it's playing in ELF, it's going to the CFL, being part of the IPP, I want to see young people achieve everything they can achieve. I've been in key hugely fortunate in my career coaching that I've got to coach in the States and coach the national program and, and coach at a decent level in the UK and I think by being selfish and saying no, you've got to stay in the UK, you've got to go to the game I want people to be scattered to the four winds and, and go and promote British American football because the youngsters will see that the youngsters will see the success of guys going to play in college and, and play in Canada and play in the, in, in the NFL and that really continues that success so it's really important for me is that putting people in a position to succeed whatever success looks like for them well I'm just taking a moment here to appreciate the fact that both sets of fans and players are clapping because the Trent player that has been down receiving some treatment is up on the dolly from the stretcher and will be wheeled off the pitch safely and there is an ambulance standing by as well ready to take them to hospital uh, Tash it's great to see that they've been able to be looked after so quickly and so swiftly and um, this is a big moment now for Trent yeah, big moment. They'll be coming back from this um, and hopefully wanting to do this player proud and really utilise this last seven minutes to go forward. Um, but just while we've got you here, Jason, this is obviously we're focused on Division 1. And like what you said, these teams are going to be pushing up to the Prem next year. You are the head coach of the University of Nottingham American football team currently in the Premiership. And our next match is going to be that big Premiership final. What are your thoughts firstly about the match that we've got coming up next you know what and a lot has been talked about um you know it was a shock to see university of nottingham lose uh last week uh, against durham durham are a really good team uh, and i think what people don't really appreciate is how talented this durham team is uh they've got talent across the board they've got a really good aggressive offensive and defensive line uh, and i think that it won't be a uh, it won't be a, a sure fire thing that people are expecting. I think Huey will obviously go into this game as favourites, but Durham are going to be here and they've, they've earned the right to compete. And just like the past two years, you know, with Nottingham in the final, I think that Durham will give a great account of themselves and they'll certainly compete and have a chance to win. Well, we're just getting news as well that Joe Parton is the player that's left the field, the uh, former Hertfordshire cheater. Um, Tash, you were very fond of uh, his participation in this game and indeed how he stayed with all of the injured players that appeared so far in this match. So it's sad to see him leave on a stretcher. Yeah, definitely. I think that being a former Hampshire Cheetah women's player myself, um, seeing seeing somebody that's come from a former club, obviously um, being being stretched off is not a nice thing to have to have to deal with. But also, as we say, Hampshire Cheetah are, Cheetahs are going to be going into the Brit Bowl Premiership next Brit Bowl Premiership next season. So we don't want to see one of their players already out. 
No, absolutely not. And actually, talking about the Premiership, talking about Britball as a whole, uh, Jason, the league at every level, as you said, is growing. And it's very exciting to see, you know, events like this are not only supported by Bucks, the university organisation, but also by the fans, the amount of people that have turned out here to support this trophy final between Exeter and Nottingham, Trent. I mean, there'll be plenty of people wanting to watch that National League next year and for many years to come. I think the best thing about British American football is the community, hands down, is it has a real passionate following and, you know, we know what our sport is and we know what it requires to succeed our sport and walking around the field you see a lot of the same faces who will go to every national final, university, flag, junior, senior, because they care about the sport and you know they've had a lot of great times and opportunities playing American football in the UK and they want to share their love and show their appreciation for the sport so I think tonight under the lights it's going to be a really good game, I think it's going to be really well attended. I think even more people will be there here for this, so it's going to be good things. Uh, Jason, just talk to me quickly about what they might be discussing here on the screen. I mean, you can see Bucks officials talking to the match officials, talking to the coaches from either side. Um, what do you think is going down? Uh, I, I'm not sure, but I know uh, Eddie Giles look, has a concerned look on his face how his arms folded. I think I don't know whether there's going to be a, an explanation of rules. Now, obviously, with the injuries we've had so far, time is uh, ticking, uh, and we're deep in the fourth quarter as it is. I don't know whether they're suggesting that the game may be called short uh, or, or what. Um, and a book staff are there involved. Um, again, I couldn't possibly contemplate what's going on, but there's something serious to be involved where there's... Is that a medical officer there talking to, to the train coaches? Uh, we're only speculating there. Well, you don't want too much uh, speculation at the end of the day, but it's great to see that there's great communication between officiating uh, sides and teams, the, both teams that are competing today, and also with Bucks, the organisation itself. I mean, this is a great example of the open communication and between all channels up and down the Britpool scene. Yeah, we're all in this together. You know, we do it because we love the sport and, you know, I've had a lot of great opportunities to work with guys like Carl and Eddie before from Trent, obviously with our annual varsity game and um, sharing the great city of Nottingham with them. Um, so we all care about the sport and whilst we may be opponents for four quarters um, at the end of the day we're here because we love American football in the UK and we want to see it grow and succeed and, and flourish. What does the future of American football look like to you in the UK? What would be your top two dream goals if you will for the game here in the United Kingdom? Well I think it's just about expansion and growth isn't it and making sure that everyone has an opportunity to participate at every level. Um, I want to see our national program succeed whether it's the women who are playing in Spain at the end of the month, uh, whether it's in the, the men's national program who have got a um, huge uh, year with um, games against Germany and Sweden, um, more participation, more involvement, more spectators. Uh, we want it to be a superb event and obviously with the ever-looming uh, Olympics flag in LA in, in four years time that's also another big thing so look we want to make sure that British American football is known in every household in the UK and it starts with promoting it quality games and making sure we're putting out a quality product and of course the rankings uh, across some of the European nations do matter to you as well I mean I personally would love to see GB up there in the top two do you think that's achievable in the next couple of years it's happening I don't know don't, don't, <laughs> there's no question about it we will be competing at the very top table in the next two to three years and we've got a great opportunity playing against two blue bloods uh, i don't think sweden have been outside the top four in 15 years and germany are a four-time european champion now am i going in that trembling and quaking absolutely not we've got players and coaches and the organization to compete with the very best and if you want to be the best let me tell you you've got to beat the best so we're going to go into sweden uh, under no illusions at the task in hand but we're going to go in there to win and then we get to host the germans in coventry in october so again huge challenges but it's one that i'm there for and again that's a great relationship that back have been able to establish as well with uh, coventry rugby that own uh, but park arena which has really established itself as a home of british american football i guess uh, yeah i hope so i mean and long may that go i know the butts park have got big plans in terms of building the hotel and, and widening their, their offer. Um, I think that's the only relationship that's going to grow. I just hope that we manage to get the deal done for this, this year and um, I'm led to believe that it's in, it's in the hands. So Due uh, to the lack of yeah, it's a great venue, venue it's the game has been suspended for, for, until further notice. So there we go. Uh, the referee on his referee mic there, uh, just going out to our live audience right now, Jason. Sorry to cut you off. Um, the, the game has been suspended due to there not being a, a, 
an ambulance presence for any medical emergencies uh, that might present themselves. Again, Tash, this goes back to our point of safety is at the very top of the list of priorities here uh, for Bucks, for Baffert and for all taking part today. Well, it's more about the rules. So um, it, it actually, um, I think it was a few years ago, um, they nearly suspended the rules that you, um, as an American football team, you only needed to have paramedics instead of an ambulance crew. Um, but due to uh, how much you can, um, how, how, much, how, how high the injury risk is in this situation, you do need an ambulance on site and so it is good that they are abiding by that by that ruling and making sure that as you say player safety is is at the utmost but like i remember my first um my first american football safety session where you you do you have a situation where you're basically presented with by the way if you play this sport you could get concussed by the way if you don't tackle correctly this is what could happen to you and that's the reason why these these crews are needed on site well, there you go. Confirmation in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen with that lovely graphic. Game suspended. Play will resume shortly. Um, the intention is to resume play. The intention is to see out the rest of this fixture. The intention is to find out who will be crowned the champion of this particular game, the trophy final champions. Um, and it's good to see the, the coach, Simon Stadden, of the University of Exercise. He's taking the time to explain to his squad as a whole what's actually taking place, what's happened, and basically how this game will play out. Because at the moment they are in the lead, um, so they would win, and that's obviously great. But as you can see, he's not going in there, you know, guns are blazing, waving everything around with jubilation. You know, he's taking this seriously and explaining to his players potentially how they need to be a, a, a little bit a little bit smart about how they react. Yeah, I mean, for any player, like you, this isn't the way that you want to win it. You don't want to win it because a player has been injured and has had to like be taken off in an ambulance, meaning that there is no ambulance present. This isn't the way you want to win. You don't want to win, win through a suspended game or through a game being called early. You want to win it because you have played until the end and you physically have like fully deserved to win it. And so actually, it will be like all of the players there will be thinking about that player in the ambulance right now and giving giving him their best wishes because none, nobody would. Want to be in that situation right now at all. Well, it's good to see the uh, players keeping themselves warm, keeping themselves limbered up and optimistic, Tash, about uh, a potential involvement again in this fixture I mean it's it's never nice to see a fixture get to this point um, but we're going to take a little bit of a break I feel like your voice might need a little bit of a rest you were very excited with some of that play <laughs> in that final quarter so whilst we let Tash take a rest we're going to hear from our sponsors and from everyone that's been supporting Bucksport up and down the country throughout this academic year especially so early on in our careers is that you have an outside perspective and like a go-to person that you can go and ask any questions regarding a situation or your career path. Having a mentor at ICG has really helped me by giving me a perspective of the company as well as my own personal improvement from a outsider's perspective. So I'm able to see and get different feedback of my own progress from someone outside of my team. Aldi different is how much responsibility they give to each and every one of us in the business and with that comes a lot of trust. 
three months into your training, you could be uh, running the store on your own, responsible for ordering all the stock, making sure the staff are happy. Aldi really believes that young people can do great things. It's, it's definitely something that excited me and attracted me to the role. I felt really supported at Aldi. From day one, you're paired up with your mentor, who is with you throughout your whole journey. You develop a really strong network with your peers. You can always pick up the phone to them. But you all work part of a team towards the common goal. I really valued my time in store because I think it's a really important part of you learning the practical day-to-day -day of store operations. It was actually really exciting and I really enjoyed it. It's, it's a change every single day um, and that variety really uh, attracted me to the role.
game will resume in 10 minutes at 10 past 5. Thank <laughs> you. 
from getting back underway here in the Book Street Wednesday, powered by New Balance, American Football Trophy Final. Welcome back, one and all, to Loughborough University. Bucks Big Wednesday Finals, powered by New Balance. We had a little bit of a delay there. There was an injury, that did mean that we lost another ambulance, and essentially that's why our game stopped. So we have to have an ambulance on standby for an injured player. We have to be able to be able to safely support anyone that might get injured in this match. And so we weren't able to resume until we knew that we safely had an ambulance secured for the remainder of this fixture. But now we have it secured. We have seven minutes left on the clock. Tash Crump, take it away. Tell me what you're looking forward to now. Yeah, I'm just looking forward to seeing what happens in the next seven minutes. This is an absolute reset for both teams. So especially Nottingham, they can really come out firing on all cylinders now, which is exactly what they're doing with this return. Look at this. Check that out from Nottingham Trent right from the get go here. Feels like we've got a fifth quarter in a way. The fact that we've had so long off and they're really taking full advantage of it. So Nottingham Trent will have the first down and the first attack in what is what I am going to coin the fifth quarter, Tash. Yeah, this opportunity for both teams coming out with fresh legs, but also an ability to actually reset and rethink about what they're doing and how they can actually, especially for NTU, bring this match back. They are starting with the ball, um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what Chris Vandergast Va Vanega <laughs> Chris Vanegas has Chris up. Chris Vanegas, there you go, Tash. You got there eventually. <laughs> has up his sleeve. I mean, sorry, I'm talking to the number one fan of the fan club. Oh, stop shooting over him. Here we go. Nottingham Trent, first and ten. Venegas standing over the ball, ready to receive. Play action now. Venegas hands off to Coca. Coca looking to try and find a way through the line. He's brought down after a gain of about five. Yeah, Coca coming out there once again, as we just said, fresh legs, really going to be pushing. And hopefully we see the NTU that we saw at the start of this match come out. Um, and especially with Coca there getting his hands on the ball. Um, we see Chris Venegas coming back with the call from the coaches. Let's see what they come out with now. Well, here we go. The call's been made. Venegas has run his spot as the messenger. Just keep your eyes on number one there at the edge of your screen, Ben Harrison. He's been fantastic in this game so far. But here we go. Second and five for Nottingham Trent. Venegas standing ready to receive the ball from the snap. Here comes the play now. Venegas looking downfield. He's run far away from the pocket now, trying to give himself a bit of space and time. Evades one tackle, sends it downfield. The reception is good. Is it enough for a first down? It is enough for a first down for Nottingham Trent. Kessie of Selassie Sosu. That was a great scramble there by Venegas. As we saw, he really had to try and evade that defensive lineman coming through from Exeter and actually did a great job, nearly got taken down, managed to get the ball away and to one of his, um, his go-to players uh, this game, Sosu. But there's that key individual uh, I spoke about just a few moments ago, Ben Harrison. He was there in the number one jersey talking to Venegas about what the play might be now. But here we go then, first and ten for Nottingham Trent. You see the 50-yard marker on the far side of your screen. Here they go, Venegas, play action, stepping away from the pocket again. He's got time to send it downfield, and he finds... The intended receiver as well. What a catch for Nottingham Trent's Joe White. Joe White there coming up the catch. We've said his name a fair few times this match already. And he has been, yet again, one of those wide receiver core that, uh, that Venegas has wanted to get the ball to. Um, and we'll watch the replay now. Um, it was really, it was great blocking there by the running backs as well. Let's give a shout out to the running backs. And then up in the air. And that was a perfect one-on-one -on -one situation. And with Joe White there, bringing up his height, making strong moves, grabbing the ball. Joe White getting the best of Lachlan Brown there. And it's first and ten for Nottingham Trent. Venegas again, looking downfield, taking his time to make the throw. He does, and it's a touchdown for Nottingham Trent University. What about that from Selassie Sosu? Look at him turning the camera. That's number two, and that is Nottingham Trent mounting a comeback. And this is what we talk about, about that reset and refresh. Nottingham Trent have been down on their luck this match so far. They are the ones that have come out with the injuries. And rightly so, these players are going to be doing this for those players that are currently sat out injured right now. But watch this replay. What a dime. Throwing it through the air, making his target known. And Sosu coming up with the catch. Great run there from the number 14. I mean, fantastic work to completely get away. 
from the defense of Exeter. And the extra point is good. So that's seven points for Nottingham Trent. Yeah, we haven't seen Nottingham Trent do what Exeter have done and go for the two points yet. Um, but maybe that might come up if they can get another score in. Well, they trail the by 15, Tash. So you might say that every time they score, if they were to score hypothetically, they have to go for two every time. Yeah, hypothetically, if they were to score three touchdowns, well, another two touchdowns, they do need to go for that two point, those two points. Well, Nottingham Trent are getting ready to restart the game. Exeter will, of course, receive. And I, I think it's fair to say Exeter won't look to rush this attack. And, well, you could argue, Tash, if they go back to that run game that they've enjoyed so much and they've found to be so fruitful in gaining yards in this match also keeps the clock ticking. It does, but I think actually for, for Exeter, what they'll want to do is actually get the ball going quickly because you want to wear out that Nottingham defence. And actually, like the best thing they can do is keep scoring because if they don't score anything but Nottingham keeps scoring on them, then you pretty much you're, you're going to be then losing the ball game yourself. Lovely kick from Tom Giles downfield to restart. And Exeter do return it, but not for too much of a gain in fairness. It's pretty much like having a little touchback there with Finley Walagora. Yeah, I thought that they were really going to go for it because it bounced and it bounced perfectly up into, into his arms. But unfortunately, the blockers just weren't there and NTU had, had, had him covered completely. Well, we've seen fans travel from far and wide to be here to support the size. We've spoken about the Exeter fans making the 402-mile round trip to be here today. We've also had representatives from Oxford Brooks make themselves known because they're here supporting a former player who's now with the Exeter side. And it's Exeter who are in possession at the moment. Abbott passes that one off and running around the outside and sideways is Finn Sly. And he's brought out of bounds as well. I thought for a second Sly might be through there. But again, running backs running sideways, not forwards, Tash. Yeah, this is the first time we've actually mentioned Finn Slyes. I think this has actually been been his first his first touch of the ball. And I think this is where what where Exeter can actually bring in some of their players that maybe haven't haven't been able to play yet but can still make those big plays. Um and and that it, it was it was one of those where once again running backs running sideways, you really want to be running forward, but actually if you are a speed back, you are trying to look for that sideline and see where the space is there. Well, speaking of Finn Sly, he actually scored his first career touchdown in the South final that came before this fixture. So what a time to finally get yourself on the touchdown sheet. And here come Exeter now. Abbott, play action, hands that off to Paul. Well, the say Paul couldn't make that many yards before the Trent defenders brought him down. And that looks as though it will be a third and five. Yeah, I think them knowing... Um, them understanding that, that Joe Parton, that number four, who was out on that left side, well, right side for NTU, left side for Exeter, um, they'll, they'll know they might be thinking, oh, we can we can get capture that area. Um, however, NTU will not be letting up that space easily. Exeter, third and five. Abbott takes the ball and hands it straight off to Paul, who nearly stumbles in his run. And is brought down again nice and early by the Trent defence. Richie Kalu this time making the tackle. Yeah, we really say about like with running backs, they need to follow their, their blockers back, but it actually NCAA. looks like... First time out of the half. Sorry to interrupt, Ash. That's a timeout from Nottingham Trent University. Clearly using their time because they want to stop that clock, don't they? Yes. Yes, they do, yeah. Um, they want to stop that clock. They want as much time as possible for them to try and get back into this game. And what I was saying there is that with running backs, you really want to actually stay close to your blocker. But I think that um, Oluwasi there got a little bit too close, ended up tripping up over, over the offensive lineman. Well, I didn't seem like they took much time out the uh, Nottingham Trent defence because they're still all lined up. They didn't really move off to the sideline for a drink of water or even a glass of milk. And they're still there, ready to go to take on the University of Exeter's offence. I mean, it's fourth and five for them now, so they're setting up a punt. But we know what Joe, what James Bush is like, and uh, well, anything could happen from this point. And it's a very high snap to James Bush, so he's had to do very well to try and control that. It's going to go out of bounds at the side, but not much yard gain at all. That was perfectly played by NTU there. I think that in those situations, in these situations where you want good field position, this has given them the best possible field position because they really chased down James there. And, and yeah, James Bush couldn't go anywhere. 
Would this be a Hail Mary play potentially from Chris Benegas? Because the mistake from James Bush means that Nottingham Trent are about 30 yards out from scoring. And if they really back themselves, could get another touchdown. I don't even necessarily think this needs to be a Hail Mary. We know that Benegas has that arm on him and he can get it down into the end zone no matter what. Well, let's see what happens. First and 10, Nottingham Trent. Lots of lateral motion there at the line of scrimmage. Venegas is looking to move out of the pocket. He sends one deep down the field because a man is open. And it's a touchdown for Nottingham Trent. It's Ben Harrison. The man I said not to take your eyes off. Have the defender's eyes off him. And Nottingham Trent are closing the gap on the scoreboard. Yeah, when we get the replay back up of this play, what you'll see is actually Harrison's first move is out towards the sideline. So he motions across. He then comes through the line of scrimmage, goes out towards the sideline, looking like he's just doing a quick slant play, when in fact he was then faking that slant play to get up the sideline and to be free in that back corner for Venegas to get the ball across. So they're going for two here. Venegas coming back on from the side, delivering the message. I think pretty much the message is we have to score this if we're staying in reach. Yeah, with, oh, with under three minutes left, you really have to do something special here to stay in reach of that championship. Well, here we go, Trent first and goal work. It's the attempt for the two points. There was a lot of motion there at the line of scrimmage and the officials aren't happy with it. Dead ball, delay of game. Offence, five-year penalty, so we'll try down. Delay of game penalty against Nottingham Trent there. Tash, what do you make of that? You will obviously want to use as much time as you possibly can, but there are some moments where you do actually need to think smart and think about your game management and think about what is actually happening in terms of like the, the timings. And Chris Venegas just, just got that slightly wrong there. There's a look at the trophy itself, the national trophy that, of course, these sides are both competing for. And now this is their attempt at two points for Nottingham Trent. Benegas takes the snap, looks downfield, takes his time, throws it long, throws it deep. It's broken up in the backfield by Exeter University. And so it means thanks to the brilliant work of Oliver Murden, no two points for Trent. Yeah, that was great work by the extra defence there. When we actually look at the um, the development of the play for NTU, um, there, there just didn't seem to be that cohesion. We couldn't necessarily see on our on our camera the the, the end zone. We could see in front of us, um, but there wasn't necessarily that free player for Venegas to get to. The running backs were doing everything that they could to block off the rushing players coming towards Venegas. Um, but in the, in the end, in the end, there just wasn't enough time for him to find that player that that had the that had the grab. And well, unfortunately, Tash, you might also add that that is potentially the end of the Nottingham Trent bid to take the crown here right at the death of the game. I mean, only nine points behind. Nothing's impossible. Maybe they could force Exeter back onto their own line and maybe they could claim a safety. I mean, the key thing is, is with this kickoff, if they can, they're probably going to go for an onside kick in this moment because you need to be able to get the ball back. And the only way to get the ball back in this moment is to go for an onside kick or to force Exeter to make a mistake. Well, let's find out what Giles opts for. Here he goes, Tom Giles sends it down the field. It's an awkward spinner. And Exeter just take it to ground. They don't want to even try and run it back because, like you said, Tash, any sort of mistake, and they invite Trent straight back into it. Yeah, and that was close there. Um, if, if number 58... No, there is no number 58 for extra apologies. Um, I've got my numbers wrong. But um, if, if the player who, who had just gone up and caught the, uh, caught the, the kick, um, there was actually, I think, a touch just as he, before he managed to actually grasp, grasp get his hands on the ball. And so that could then cause them a world, of, a world of problems when actually he should have just stepped away and not even tried. Here we go, first and 10, University of Exeter. Abbott standing over the ball, ready to get things started. And he dumps that one off. It was Carl West trying to find a way through the middle, but there isn't a hole for him to walk through. Time out. NTU, that is their second time out of the half. Sadly, we have another time out. It's an injury time out. I was hearing initially from the referee, but the player is getting back up again. It's number 99 for Nottingham Trent, which is Sean Gennardo. He 
He's staying up there in the line. He's a big figure that you probably don't want to miss, actually, from your D-line, Tash. No, definitely not. It really helps having that tall person on your D-line to be able to then get up and potentially get your hand in the way of the ball to be able to put the QB off, to be able to get those tips, like we saw what extra Dimas do earlier. Here we go. Play action now. Handed off once again to Carl West for Exeter. And he probably breaks even on that charge forward, so it'll be third and seven once more for the University of Exeter. That is and the third and final time out of the half. Johnson. Sorry, just to let you know, Tash, that's the third and final timeout of the half from Nottingham Trent University. So they have used them all up now. That is pretty big because all of a sudden you haven't got that at your disposal for the rest of the game. You don't have that at your disposal for the rest of the game, but they have had to manage the game as best as possible. And that was the best thing that they could do is utilize it in, in those instances. But now it's about actually what can the players do on the field? And they're putting that trust in their players to make big plays. As a defender in this situation, Tash, do you want to show them the sidelines and you know usher them out of bounds because then the clock does stop? You do, but the problem is is what play they come out with because they're going to be wanting to go down the middle to keep the clock going. So you can't necessarily pick that player up and walk him out the sideline. <laughs> well, keep your eyes on Abbott standing at quarterback with his running backs alongside him. I think we all know where this is going. Here we go, third and seven. Abbott hands that straight off to Carl West. West is making some good yards there for the University of Exeter, but once again, the Nottingham defence stops in. So he makes about four before he's stopped on the floor. And they haven't got the first down, so this is going to be really pivotal of what NTU can do again in this scenario. Are they actually going to be able to stop James Bush from being able to um, from being able to get the kickoff like they did last time and put themselves back into an extremely good position to try and get another touchdown? And there's that thing that we were talking about. The clock is ticking down. It's going to hit the two-minute warning as well. And there is the way from the officials. This is the official two-minute warning. Two-minute warning. NTU have no timeouts remaining. Exeter have three. A reminder as well that Exeter have three timeouts remaining, and Nottingham Trent University have none left for them to use. Uh, Tash, on this fourth down, we're just going to bring him up again, James Bush. Uh, he's been phenomenal all match for the University of Exeter. Um, he's one of those players that will actually look to go for a kick, but then actually might throw that one downfield. Yeah, he can do that, but I think the key thing is, is actually they're going to want to try and put it like as safe as possible, but it actually it looks like that um, the, the QB um, Ben Abbott, ben Abbott is, is getting back in play, so it looks like they're going to go for it. And they have been successful in these situations throughout the game, so it makes sense. Well, this would surely close out the game for the University of Exeter. This is a big moment now. Abbott standing over, ready to take the snap. Fourth and two for Exeter, but there is a flag. Just take a listen into our officiating team now for you. Exactly. Just a note from the referee that the play clock is being reset to two minutes. And it looks like Exeter have been driven back five yards, so they are opting, it looks, to kick instead of going for the play. Well, here we go then. Fourth down and five for the University of Exeter. James Bush does put boot to ball and send it downfield. And the only person home for Trent is Ben Harrison, who's not touched it. He's just watching it along with the rest of the Exeter University team. That is what you call a punt. They're two yards out from the Nottingham Trent line. And, well, Tash, that's an impossible. That's the Everest of mountains to climb now. It is, and they have got a far distance to go, but we've seen, especially in what you are calling the fifth quarter, <laughs> we've seen Chris Benegas actually like throw complete dimes down the pitch, and we're not talking just like 15, 20 yards. We're talking full 30, 40 yard throws right now. So we know that he can do it. We know that we, he can get his team down the pitch. What I found interesting is the fact that um, that as much as Exeter did touch the ball, it was down to another player, an Exeter player, to actually ensure that the, the ball that they had kneeled when he, when he took the ball at the end there, um, which is what you actually need to do. As NTU could have taken that and actually run with it. Well, here come Nottingham Trent now, first in 10. Venegas 
steps back out of the pocket, looks to send it down the field. He's found a target in Kobe Poulton. Poulton takes it forward, but he's in play. So the clock is still ticking down. Trent being ushered on to get on with it. All the messages from the sidelines, get on with it, get set, get ready to go. And it's going to be another first down for them straight away. Yeah, that wasn't good game management there from Poulton actually needing to get, get to the sideline to stop that clock. I think the message has been received to Poulton that he doesn't need to do that again. Venegas takes the snap, looking downfield, finds a target. I think it's Sosu. Sosu is out by the edge. He was desperately trying to find the sidelines to go out of bounds, and he did. So the clock now stops on one minute and nine seconds left. A reminder that Nottingham Trent are trailing by nine points. And there is another flag. Illegal shift, offence, five-yard penalty, first down. It's an illegal shift against the offence. There's a five-yard penalty, Tash. You can't do things like that. No, you can't. As much as like they are trying to get clever with their play calling, they actually just need to keep it simple because it's the simple stuff that's going to work for them now. Um, and I think it is. it's about actually having smart football brains right now on the pitch to ensure the game is managed, the game is managed and they are able to actually come out on top at the end of this getting a touchdown because as much as there's a minute left they are still in possession of the ball yes a touchdown will not get them in the lead but if then they can make extra make a mistake if there's still play time on the clock they could actually take this here we go then Nottingham Trent first and 15 as it is for them now motion across the line of scrimmage there from Harrison Venegas takes the snap and he's looking downfield again Bides his time, there's a lot of open field in front of him if he wants to use it, and he will, weaving in and out of the exit defence and sliding out of bounds, and the clock will also stop on about 58, 57 seconds, it now freezes. Really smart play there from the quarterback. Yeah, really smart, and you can tell that what Exeter are doing is they are stacking their defence, but they're making sure they stack their defence towards the sidelines and towards the, towards the receivers, because they know that Venegas can actually get that ball high in the air and deep. He can send it wherever they want it to be sent. And that is the beauty of having someone of the quality of Venegas on your side. And I mean, what a season he's had so far. He's thrown for 1,900 yards this season, more than anyone else in that quarterback locker room. And here he goes again, Venegas on the second and 10 for Nottingham Trent. Looking to send that one down. He's got to run away from the onslaught in defence from Exeter. Smart again from the quarterback to take it out of bounds. But the seconds are running away from Nottingham Trent now. It's the way that he's able to roll into the pocket, but it looks like he's actually requesting to be called out. And for backup QB, Liam McGovern, who is also, I think, the club captain or uh, the team captain um, for the NTU Renegades, was asked nearly to go in there. But I think Venegas is continuing and taking taking the QB position again for this play but it did look like in that moment he did say I want I want to switch out it would be special to see McGovern because it's his fifth and final season with the Nottingham Trent University Renegades he's been a university all-star he's made the GB 100 man squad and as you say the team president president so it would be special to see him again here we go first and ten Venegas throws it out wide and they need to get out of bounds and that time Kobe Poulton gets the message and at 42 seconds, the clock stops once more. Yeah, it's that moment where he definitely learnt from his first mistake, where he where he went down in field. I get that players really want to get those yardage, but actually it's about getting the yards and getting out of bounds when you are in this situation. Game management is everything. When you only have 42 seconds left, you're down by nine, um, and you have a game to try and win. There you go, the clock's changed to 41 seconds, Tash, as well. So the seconds are literally being plucked from them as we speak. But here we go with another first and ten for Nottingham Trent University. Venegas standing over Harrison with a bit of motion now at the line of scrimmage. Venegas takes a snap, looks to hand it off to Coker, but keeps it himself and tries to throw it over the top of the extra defence. He regathered. And he's caught it, but the clock is still going. That's what we say about when you have those really tall defensive line who can block your QB from getting a pass off. And so that was incredible there by the Exeter defensive line. Here we go now, second and lots. 
for Nottingham Trent University, but they might have done it with Sosu, but he couldn't get out to the sideline again and go out of bounds. So again, the clock counts down. Four seconds left. They've got to snap this ball and get it moving. I don't think they're going to do it. They're not. That's the full-time whistle, and Exeter University are your champions. Of the game. Confirmation from the referee. They triumph 36-27 against Nottingham Trent University. They are the first champions of Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance, and they have overpowered the Renegades from Nottingham, and they have won this trophy final. Yeah, big congrats to Exeter right there. They were definitely, after that first quarter, the underdogs, and everyone was underestimating them, feeling that potentially they might have had an easy run, and actually they were just going to breeze, they thought they were going to breeze through all the way to the end. Um, and NTU really came up trumps and really came up as that, the, the, would come up as the winners. But unfortunately, the momentum that NTU had in that first quarter just couldn't carry through for the rest of the game. Just look at what it means to them. Look at that body of people, that swarm of people that have come together to celebrate their triumphant win against Nottingham Trent Renegades. This is a huge moment in many people's lives because as you rightly said at the very start of this programme, Tash, for many it's their final game of uni ball and for many it's them bowing out of Brit ball as well as obviously graduate commitments might not always permit people to continue their American football career but what a way for them to sign off. Yeah, I think that this is what everyone looks forward to, to the end, like, looks forward to at the end of a uni ball season is celebrating with their teammates. And what a better way to celebrate than not only getting promoted, but then winning the trophy at the end of it. That's what you want to come away with. You want to come away with the silverware. Great being promoted, but if you don't come away with that trophy, what you've been working towards potentially um, hasn't then your 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 goal hasn't been met. Um, for NTU, it is really really unlucky. Um, as I say, that first quarter of them was absolutely incredible. And yeah, big props then. They kept going all the way to the end, even through the injuries. And actually, it's just great. It was great to see some of the really big moments. And when you actually look at their, their gameplay, some of their gameplay was uh, head and shoulders above the rest. And especially their game management towards the end there, really pushing for top, top game management, making sure players got out of bounds, making sure that players knew their responsibility. And even just towards the end there, where they were trying to hurry, hurry, hurry and get players on the line, they were set up and ready. It was actually Exeter that weren't ready and the clock, the clock just had to run down. And a special shout out to that Exeter coaching side, obviously the head coach, Simon Staddard, and then the list of assistant coaches that go alongside him. Lydon Ward Best, Sean Tapping Davis, Ben Shepherd, Jack Mullins, Ian Chown. Ben Shaw, Nigel Hoyt, David Spear, Tom Seeger, Tony Toretti and Benjamin Richards and Thomas Paulding. I mean, great to have all of them nurture this exercise into what has been a resounding victory for them. But now, whilst we watch the celebration pictures on our screen, let's switch camps and talk about commiserations to Nottingham Trent, who really put up a fight throughout this entire fixture, even when they started to lose bodies quite considerably during this match, and lose some key figures as well through the likes of Parson as well, to which we send our best wishes. Um, but they really did put up a fight. Yeah, they really did. And um, I think that if if, it, if the momentum had kept, kept swinging in their way, there would have definitely been some key people. And I still think there could be some key people that will be in in with the um, in, in with the, the the potential MVP conversation when we think about who's going to be MVP at the end of this game. Some of those NTU players were still making plays, were still making making uh, making waves. Um, so as we say, we look at Ben Harrison. Obviously, we keep me men mentioning about Chris ben Benegas. And actually, it's those players that kind of kept this team moving, kept this team going. Um, and especially that wide receiver core, like big shout out to them, like absolutely incredible. Without that link up with Chris Venegas, like, I don't think this team would have actually had much going for them. Goodness knows how many victory songs they can get through on a 402 mile round journey, but it's only 201 miles back to the Exeter University campus. And really big congratulations to them and what they've been able to achieve in their season. They are the undefeated they are the undefeated side that remain undefeated today. And for Nottingham Trent, it's only one loss in the entire season, but it's a loss that's come at the worst possible time for them. Yeah, I think that when we look at um, when we look at the celebrations at the moment, as we were talking about how obviously there's a lot of people who it'll be their final seasons, it'll be it'll be their last opportunity to play uni uh, uni ball, but hopefully this won't be their last time playing American football. 
Well, we're going to take a quick moment to thank all of our amazing partners and sponsors that make events like these possible and continue to support British universities and colleges sports up and down this wonderful country. especially so early on in our careers is that you have an outside perspective and like a go-to person that you can go and ask any questions regarding a situation or your career path. Having a mentor at ICG has really helped me by giving me a perspective of the company as well as my own personal improvement from a outsider's perspective. So I'm able to see and get different feedback of my own progress from someone outside of my team. What makes Aldi different is how much responsibility they give to each and every one of us in the business. And with that comes a lot of trust. Three months into your training, you could be uh, running the store on your own, responsible for ordering all the stock, making sure the staff are happy. Aldi really believes that young people can do great things. It's, it's definitely something that excited me and attracted me to the role. I felt really supported at Aldi. From day one, you're paired up with your mentor, who is with you throughout your whole journey. You develop a really strong network with your peers. You can always pick up the phone to them. But you all work part of the team towards the common goal. I really valued my time in store because I think it's a really important part of you learning the practical day-to-day -day of store operation. It was actually really exciting and I really enjoyed it. It's, it's a change every single day um, and that variety really uh, attracted me to the role. partners and sponsors and indeed look ahead to the other events that are still to come in this academic sporting calendar but for now Tash we're going to turn our attention to the medal ceremony and the fact that we have just experienced a phenomenal game of American football British American football and it was a fine example of exactly that Will be what is key. And we were hearing from uh, Jason Scott as well that actually he just wants to keep growing this game, keep developing the game, and actually make these young men better versions of themselves so that they can help to grow the American football game here in the UK as well. And I think if he can recruit a lot of these players to stay in the game, because we were mentioning that's sometimes a struggle for graduates, they can stay in the game thanks to people like Jason Scott, then we're on to developing leaps and bounds on the international stage. Yeah, definitely. I think that we really need to actually look at how we can keep players in the game because some people, they get to the end of their university career and yeah, they don't want to carry on, but actually this is the talent that you want because they are experienced and they have that opportunity to move forward and really make an make a, make a impact in the game. Well, and the MVP announcement has just been made throughout the stadium. It is number 45, the running back,
Carl West for the University of Exeter. He has just been named in front of his peers as the MVP for this game. And Tash, just a quick word on him as an individual. He's had a stellar outing. Yeah, he was incredible today for the University of Exeter. When you actually look at the runs that he made, he was one of the key momentum impact players of this match for the University of Exeter. So, yeah, really, really well deserved on that front. Anything else you want to add about the running back? I mean, he seemed unstoppable at some points on this pitch. Yeah, there were moments where, especially in that kind of second and third quarter, where he was the only person that could physically stop NTU from winning this match because he was just powering through and kept powering through. And I think that he was actually one of the big reasons why he like, actually, the University of Exeter, managed to come back into this game because we said about their passing not being on form to begin with, and he was the only player that was actually making great yards for them. Yes, we had Oluwasi who managed to get the touchdown, but that was all thanks to Carl West powering down the field. And that's the reason why he is today's MVP. And let's take a moment just to appreciate this. If we turn around and have a look, we can see the Nottingham Trent team making their way up to collect their medals. Yes, they are runners-up medals and not the silverware they would have expected or hoped to go away with in this game. But at the end of the day, it's silverware nonetheless because lots of people compete to get to these finals and really not many end up at them. Yeah, I think the key thing is, is it's similar to what we said about when we talk about um, the Brit Bowl and the uh, Division 1 and Division 2 finals. As much as you are getting that runners-up medal, you have been promoted. Like You've still got that to celebrate. You've still got to celebrate the fact that you are going to be in the Premiership next year. So, yes, they are runners-up medals, but they have done a lot to get to where they are. And actually, they have done a better job than every other Division 1 team in this country. So, you know, got to give them, got to give them that. But the rise of Nottingham Trent University Renegades will continue. And I think we could see some very exciting matchups between Jason Scott's University of Nottingham side as well as this Nottingham Trent team for many years to come into the future, don't you think? Yeah, it's really great. So, um, as somebody that's played against Nottingham Trent and the University of Nottingham, that matchup is a big one because they play varsity against each other. They have that opportunity now to play each other again twice next season so it will almost be like a warm-up opportunity for Varsity but I know for a fact that this has been a long rivalry that's been going strong for years as Notting University of Nottingham and Nottingham Trent have been not necessarily University of Nottingham in the last few years but Nottingham Trent in particular a yo-yo team between Division 1 and the Premiership so that has meant then that that team has actually has the knowledge and understanding of what it's like to be in the Premiership and also what it's like to play against University of Nottingham every single year so they are going to be ones to watch next season for the Premiership because they know what it's like they've been there before and it's a great experience for them to once again be back where in true honesty like after playing against them in one of my seasons like where they belong Absolutely and I mean look we're looking at this team now the last few people are standing up to collect their runners up medals and um, Adrian Jarge should be particularly proud of the side that he's put together and I think actually he probably shares the same ethos as Jason Scott and I'm going to quote uh, a well-known butts coach here in Danny Milton he doesn't want to turn these boys just into amazing athletes he wants to turn them into the best versions of themselves that's humanly possible to send them out into the world as brilliant young men and I think really Giles and his team really live up to that yeah I think a massive shout out to all the coaches that coach in University of American football levels because a lot of them are, are volunteers, a lot of them give up their time and American football is actually one of the most time consuming sports at university. You have probably about two, three training sessions a week that are all two or three hours long. That's nearly up to nine hours and that's not including even the games. The game days are literally a whole day taken away. So that's a whole day taken away from your university like life and you, what you're here to do which is get an education. But actually it's those volunteers, those coaches that are really like the true heroes that give up their time away from their families, away from their normal lives to come and help and as you say grow young men young women into their, the next stage of their lives and it's amazing absolutely now let's just take a moment to listen to the cheers because exeter are about to receive their winners medals so let's take a listen in as to how big the cheers are going to be from the traveling fans just listen to the fact that they're all still here it's beginning to darken the lights are about to turn on so we can see each other tash and they're still out here supporting their Exeter team and they've really done everyone proud, including the university themselves. Yeah, the Exeter team, but especially the Exeter supporters, it's like what I said to you, Nottingham is the closer university to Loughborough. So you'd expect them to almost have that like home field advantage. That wasn't the case because actually Exeter had such a big following when it came to this match. They had such a big following, they had such a big support behind them and the cheers, the, the cheers and 
what we have just seen there with all of them running onto the pitch at the end, it was so great to see. And I think that actually when we look at this X team coming forward, there's so many of them and they brought all of that support with them because they are such a close-knit group and it's clear to see that. A special word on their fan base as well. There was a cockapoo that joined them as well to celebrate today and to join in the celebrations at the end as well. And so I'm sure Exeter will be pleased to give them all the scratches and pets that that very good boy deserves for cheering them on in this game and look, just look at what it means that there are tears being shed there are hugs being handed out left right and center and we've got a director of sport from the university of Exeter actually to present the medals themselves uh, this is a fantastic moment for the university and potentially we could see Exeter as a future force to be reckoned with actually in the whole uni ball and brick ball scene yeah I think if they can really keep hold of their their core personnel like what we talked about is actually in uni ball the ability to actually keep hold of players and to keep hold of hold of teams that work well together if they can do that then I think that definitely next year in the premiership once again just like NTU are forced to be reckoned with and I think they've shown that in today's final but I think the key thing with um, with with um, this this I guess I'm actually going to say it this young extra team you had some core players in there from GB under 19 they are just beginning their career and to see them come out and win this that would just push them to want to go even further in their brick ball in their brick ball well, I'm just looking over at them now, and one of the questions I get asked a lot of the time with American football is, there's no way that with the size of the squad you all know each other and all treat each other as one big family. And many people won't believe it still when I say now, but Tash is completely 100% true. Every single person there in that extra team will know exactly every person's name and we congratulating them, know how much it means to them. And that's part of the beauty of American football as well, isn't it? Yeah, they will be friends with these people for life. I am still friends with people that I played American football with. We still have like the old boys and the old girls chats. We still do that alumni meet up every single year. And that is what American football is about. It's not just a family for while you're at university. It's that continue, it's that continued family that you have following your university career. And then you have that opportunity to go back to your campus every year to join up, potentially play an alumni game and relive your days. I know people from my old team that played about 25 years ago and it is so great to come back see those people but also catch up and reminisce about your time playing uni ball and that's exactly what these guys will be doing with their alumni who have also played and been and not necessarily been in this position but can be but can understand what it's like to play for this team and their alumni will be cheering them on right now and be so happy that they have managed to get this far and are not only division one champions for their um for their conference but also they are now the overall trophy champions at Bucks. It's a very special achievement and you can see their number 82, James Bush, making his way onto the fringe of that setup around the Champions board. Uh, definitely one that should have been up there for, for nominations of MVP. Ultimately, it did go to Carl West very deservedly, but another one who had a stellar game. Yeah, we talked about James Bush so much in the lead up to this and it was because he he was doing so much. He was everywhere. He not only played receiver, he was the kicker. He was also on defense. Sometimes he was being a core part of special teams. It's one of those where you see sit there and you think to yourself wow this guy can do everything this guy can do everything he's all over the pitch and he was a massive standout for them and rightly so he should have been in that MVP chat and I hope that he was well I believe the final medals have been presented all that's left is to hand over the trophy to the University of Exeter for them to lift aloft into the air and to enjoy the celebrations and the beginning of what will be probably the biggest party that this American football side will ever have hosted or experienced. And I think whilst we're watching plenty of sport tomorrow here at Loughborough University, Exeter might be partying all day long. There goes the trophy. Here comes the lift. The University of Exeter, they are your 2024 trophy champions. And we're going to leave you with those images of celebration and also these words from our amazing sponsors and partners.
Torah, especially so early on in our careers, is that you have an outside perspective and like a go-to person that you can go and ask any questions regarding a situation or your career path. Having a mentor at ICG has really helped me by giving me a perspective of the company as well as my own personal improvement from a outsider's perspective. So I'm able to see and get different feedback of my own progress from someone outside of my team. What makes Aldi different is how much responsibility they give to each and every one of us in the business. And with that comes a lot of trust. Three months into your training, you could be uh, running the store on your own, responsible for ordering all the stock, making sure the staff are happy. Aldi really believes that young people can do great things. It's, it's definitely something that excited me and attracted me to the role. I felt really supported at Aldi. From day one, you're paired up with your mentor, who is with you throughout your whole journey. You develop a really strong network with your peers. You can always pick up the phone to them. But you all work part of a team towards the common goal. I really valued my time in store because I think it's a really important part of you learning the practical day-to-day -day of the store operations. It was actually really exciting and I really enjoyed it. It's, it's a change every single day um, and that variety really uh, attracted me to the role. Well, you can see it nicely there on display for us all to see. Carl West, you are the MVP of this trophy final. How does it feel to be able to have that title? I, it's just the best feeling I think I've ever felt. I mean, it's been 12 very long, hard-fought games, and I'm really glad to just have this award, I guess, recognition, and also be national champions. The whole team is it's just incredible work from everyone. I'm just, I'm just really proud of everyone. I mean, it was a brilliant individual game from yourself. I mean, you're praising the team, you're being very humble about it, but you rushed for so many yards. You seem to walk through the trend defence a lot of the time. I mean, talk to me about how you thought your own personal game has come on leaps and bounds. Well, I mean, last season I didn't score. A uh, touchdown. I got 15 this season, so I'm quite just a slight improvement. A slight, a slight improvement. improvement. A small one, but um, no, I'm, I'm. It was a rocky start to the game. Obviously, going 14 points down, but then it just seemed like they couldn't handle me. I'm just, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so chuffed for everyone for the team. The O line blocking for me, of course. <laughs> My coaches would be very upset if I didn't say that. But yeah, no, I'm just really happy. Yeah. Amazing. And look, are there any unsung heroes that deserve a shout out? Not necessarily players, but maybe coaches, physios, water boys that might be uh, helping out the squad along this journey? No, nah, just e everyone who's come with us, everyone who's taken the five hour coach journey down, a massive thank you. But I got to thank my other running backs. Without them, like, I wouldn't be as good as I am. Like, my best mate, Darren. Love you, man. Uh, just everyone, I'm just, I'm so happy. Uh, and also, like my parents, thank you very much. Well, Carl, I'm going to let you go enjoy the awesome. celebrations. I'll take that off you. Amazing. Go milk every moment I for me as the MVP. Yeah. That's fantastic. I'm going to bring Tash back into the fold. It's great to hear how much it means to Carl West more than anything in the world. And the fact that his game's improved in the space of a year, that, that's huge. Yeah, and the fact that he's literally been doing it for a year, and as you say, it's just suddenly like come in, like starter, everything, and that's absolutely amazing. I know that in a minute we're going to grab James Bush as well to chat to James Bush about his game, but I think that just listening to what Carl West said, really thanking obviously the rest of the running backs, but also friends just being there to be supportive, just a really, really great, great thing to hear and great thing to see. Um, but right now we have James, James Bush. Bush. Here we go, my shortlisted MVP, James. We're going to throw that out there now, not just because you're my namesake. Um, but, James, that was a fantastic game for the University of Exeter team. What I want to talk about is your love, apparently, for fakes. Um, you seem to set up for a kick, and then out of nowhere, yeah. you're throwing for two. Uh, what is that all about? Uh, that's all the uh, director of football. It's all uh, Coach Leiden. Um, he just loves a bit of trickery, and he's always gone with the mindset of you only got to get that two points 50% of the time for it to be as good as... 1.100% of the time, so we just go with that. And we love a statistic. It. We love it when it's given to us straight like that. Now, James, uh, overall, this team has played fantastically well, so indeed, across the whole season. I mean, 160 points in favour of you guys going into this game. Now, 196, four short of 200 in postseason alone. And what have you got to say about the offence? I mean, it all stems, I've got to give credit to our O-line. Like, it all comes from them. Like, yes, receivers, we benefit from, you know, having these passes and these creative play designs, but to be honest, you guys have seen it all season. It's, it's been a case of us running the ball, you know, getting on top of the up opposition and, and playing from there. So I've got to give credit to our O-line. Like, they've just been tremendous. Now, before I let you go back and join in the celebration, because I know you don't want to be talking to me, that's exactly what you want to be doing. What's next for this team, do you think, at the University of Exeter? Is this now a force to be reckoned with going forward into the future of British American football and uni ball? I mean, I definitely hope so. Like, oh, unfortunately, I'm, I'm finished now. I'm three years and done. But... Uh, 
Uh, There's always a Masters. Yeah, Panic Masters could do. Um, <laughs> but I think, you know, there's there's still a lot of the team that's here next year. Good good number of the O-line, the corn defense as well stay in. So, you know, it's definitely um, definite room for improvement. I don't see why we can't compete up in the Prem. Well, James, tell me that, Mike. Go join in the celebrations. Congratulations. You are the trophy champion. Enjoy it while you can. Tash, I'm going to bring you back in. Uh, for some final thoughts, I guess, because we've, we've seen the game, we've seen what it means to Exeter, we know how much Nottingham Trent will be hurting right now as well. Um, this has been a great showcase of British American football and uni ball as a whole. Yeah, a really great showcase, and I think it sets us up perfectly for the game that we're about to see, which is the big Premiership Cup final. They've got a lot to live up to in this they championship do. game, a lot to live up to. Now it's UE Bullets against Durham. Who are you backing in this matchup? In all honesty, like I would love to say, oh, I'm here for the underdogs, but UE Bullets, they're just a whole, they're on a whole other level compared to every other uni ball team. And I think that if I wasn't to say them, I think everyone would probably be saying, do I have some sort of like Mystic Meg thing going on <laughs> where like I've seen into the future and I know somehow that like this is going to happen. Um, because yeah, UE Bullets, tipped favourites and rightfully so, they are stacked as a team. Well, one thing I will give a shout out before you join us later for that championship match, you should check out the Durham American Football Instagram page. They did a Blues Brothers style recruitment video, which was hilarious. It had a higher production value, I would assume, than most of the Marvel films coming out of Hollywood at the moment. Um, but quickly, before we wrap the show completely, Simon Stadden is sort of off shot and I'm going to bring him in. I know he doesn't want to come in. But I am going to bring him in. If only I have one of those big, long hooks to bring you in, Simon. Yeah, make, no, sure, you get them, included, yeah, get, make sure you get the medal, medal out. Included. Uh, Simon, just tell me what it means right now to be the trophy champions in 2024. I'm just trying to take it in, to be honest. Um, sorry, I get quite emotional. I take all the time you need, Simon. This is, I mean, it's, it's a been huge a long, moment. hard season. Um, and I've really been trying to impress on the guys that these things don't come, across, come along very often. Um, I've been 30 odd years in this game, through the first. So, yeah, it means a lot. Oh, Simon, thank you very much for, for sharing how much it means. And, like, do you believe, or you've asked every single player, and I've asked Tash, I've asked Jason, do you believe that Exeter could be a new force to be reckoned with in the game of uni ball, a British American football, also? Absolutely. Um, if we keep recruiting well, which is the goal, um, you know, Southwest football traditionally has always been a strong, strong division. Um, you know, we've got some closest, real good battles with our closest rivals in that division, and we're always a strong, strong area of the country. So there's no reason why Exeter can't carry on and springboard from here on and, 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 and do really well. And that's, you know, that's our ultimate goal for the boys. Well, Simon, I'm not going to keep you here any longer. You need to get stuck into those celebrations again. Off you go. Go on. Enjoy the coach journey back. Thank you for everything today. Well, Tash, there you go. That's exactly what it means to, to Simon and his coaching team. I mean, I, I'm kind of worked up as well just from hearing how much it means to Simon and how big this game is. Your final thoughts ahead of the championship match, please. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be big. There are going to be some awesome plays, and I, I wouldn't miss it. Well, don't go anywhere. Keep your eyes on the Bucks YouTube page because coming up in just a few short hours is the UE game against Durham for the championship, the ultimate prize in the American football scene at Bucks level. Stick around. Welcome to Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance. It's a final play, and look at the celebrations, look at how much it means to Northumbria. That is full time here, and Nottingham reigns supreme. Take it in for the second, love for a touchdown. White will head for the corner, but he won't need to get there. The referee blows the full time whistle. 